Um, I think that we can call to order there being a quorum of members. So if um, the secretary will call the roll, we could call Certainly. Um, Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Uh, Person Cancel. Here. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Brooks. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Here. Thank you. And Commissioner Richards. Well, we understand she'll be logging in. We could note when that happens. Yes. Okay. Well, there being a quorum present, I'll ask if um, we'll open now to, um, is it public comment or tenant comment? Because I don't have the Resident comment first. Yes, mm -hmm. so resident comment first, and then we'll follow that with public comment and staff comment. Jack, oh, if you- Point of information. Way, be great. Point of information. Is the attorney, um, Tom Connor, is he considered staff or public? Hey. No. No. Uh, Gary, you're muted. I, I'm assuming the question is to me. Are you asking that question? To the chair, you? yes. I'm asking okay. you. Okay. Um, can you clarify for me, Director Leeper, is Attorney O'Connor staff for the purposes of this meeting? No, uh, Attorney O'Connor is a contractor. Uh, he is here um, as uh, he is asked to attend the, the meetings to ensure that we don't have any open meeting law uh, issues or quorum issues or any of that. As usual, or, uh, okay, so you're not asking anything different than is as usual, right? Well, the reason why I'm saying it's not, not usual, usually attorneys, especially if they're on retainer, do not participate in the meeting unless they're participating as a staff. I checked on this specifically because many times we refer to him, but he is not a member of the board. And yes, he is a contract, Usually attorneys don't, you refer back to them. They don't come to these meetings. And how much does he get paid to come to each meeting? I'm just gonna ask that, hold on. The questions around this are not really on the agenda for this. Right. I take your point, I take your point of information. You're wondering whether it's legal or appropriate for us to have attorney O'Connor present at this meeting. And I just wanna say that we always have the option to us as a board to recognize anyone. So I would suggest for tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to recognize attorney O'Connor for the purposes of this meeting and to take up the clarification of the issue that Tar Commissioner Tarbutton raises for getting more information. But if we wanna proceed with this meeting, I would ask just for better safe than sorry, is there a motion that we would recognize attorney O'Connor and his participation as has been typically a parliamentarian. Well, point of information. You didn't, okay. Cause I need to know if he gets paid for this. No, you don't need to know that for this purposes of this motion. Okay. Okay. So I would ask if may we uh, recognize attorney O'Connor or have a motion please to recognize attorney O'Connor for the duration of the meeting. Motion to accept attorney O'Connor for this meeting. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Uh, we don't have a discussion. Oh, sure. You can have a discussion about whether to Thank recognize. Thank you. Yes, I just, uh, he is an employee. He's, he's on the agenda tonight and we'll be discussing him. And then I went and checked and usually it's not, we, of course you do it here, but that's not exactly how it's usually done. He is a staff member or he's a member of the public. And I think that's kind of a unfair advantage because I think 99.99% .99 of the time that he uh, is with the chair and I don't know what his role is and he's not a board member. And if you could please recognize, show me on the bylaws where that is accepted. Is there any other comment on this motion? <clears throat> I, I guess you're not going to show me the bylaws because there isn't. I say absolutely not. I'm sorry, is there another comment besides Commissioner Tarbutton on this uh, motion? I, <clears throat> I'll just say that historically, um, the council's always been attending the board meetings um, as a useful resource in conjunction with open meeting law violations and um, and and also historically, the one time 
um, when I was chair, we had an open meeting law violation, um, which was an open meeting law violation. Um, Attorney O'Connor did not attend that meeting. Oh, okay. And I because came away I thinking that had he been there, we never would have proceeded in the way we did. So I think it's very useful. Well, I think I think not because the first time that the NHA got a violation for open meeting uh, violation, I don't know if that's beforehand the ones that you're talking about, but he was the attorney on record, and I know I've been in a meeting where there was an open meeting violation. He was quiet as a you know, uh, a cricket was even louder. So I don't think that we or in the bylaw says we need him here because I think we ought to understand our own rules. We need him to guide us for the open meeting uh, violations. I think that because um, there is a question tonight is about the open meeting and a violation uh, that had to do with the contract that's in East Hampton. So I think it's violation of open meeting law. I, I just think that that's 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 something you have been historically doing. And I think one of the reasons they say this is quit doing what you think you've always done. Remember, you always used to have two people, one person holding two positions on the executive committee, and that doesn't make it right. And I think that if we are going to adhere to the bylaws, why have them if you don't adhere to them? Okay, thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. So we've heard twice now. I wanna make sure that anybody who wants the opportunity to uh, speak on the motion. And I want you to speak on the motion, which is whether to recognize Attorney O'Connor tonight for tonight's meeting and not whether or not in the future as a good practice, as was good or bad in the past and might be in the future. We're talking about whether tonight we may continue, which is what has been our past practice of uh, having recognizing Attorney O'Connor for the purposes of this meeting. And I would ask you to separate that out from whether or not you want a bylaw change or amend amendment or anything Never else. Never said that. No, I just, uh, particularly tonight, because his contract is up for uh, uh, negotiation. So particularly tonight, I don't think he should be a part of this. Uh, we know that you've said that twice now. Okay, well, me, I don't know if I've said it three times. I just wanted well, to make no, sure. No, no, go covered. ahead. Please, please take up enough. Please go ahead. I'd like to ask other members of the board if they have other things to say about it, but you go ahead now. No, 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 you're the chair. Okay, then is there, anyone else, is there anyone else who would like to address whether or not we recognize Attorney O'Connor for tonight's purposes of this meeting? Your person, Carney, just for the record, I'd like to note that at 5.38 p.m., Commissioner uh, Richards has joined. Yeah. Okay, and to com bring Commissioner Richards up to speed, what we have on the table is a motion to recognize Attorney O'Connor for the purposes of this board meeting tonight, with the understanding that questions are raised as to how that will be in the future. And he's, yes. his contract is being up tonight as well. Uh, thank you, Commissioner and Chairperson Carney. I'm sorry I had trouble connecting for some reason. I'm here. <laughs> okay, so if there are no further comments, I'll ask Commissioner Tarbutton one more time then. Can I ask you, is everybody here, all the board members here? Yes, they are. Something's wrong with my view. Okay. Oh, I see. All right. Okay, so there being no further comments or questions, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask for a roll call on the motion to recognize Attorney O'Connor for the meeting tonight. Yes, in recognizing Attorney O'Connor uh, for tonight's meeting, May, uh, June 26, 2023, uh, presented uh, first by Jim Brooks and uh, seconded by Jeff Jones. Uh, roll call vote, uh, Chairperson Carney? Yes. Vice Chairperson Cancel? Abstain. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton? Absolutely not. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jones? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. And so I think really? now what we're at, I do understand that that motion carried. And so when it comes to it, I, Commissioner, I'm sorry, Attorney O'Connor will be known to be recognized through the duration of the meeting. And so for the, for the next portion of the meeting, we have um, resident comment. So 
I'd like to have uh, Jack, please, or Kara, which of you would like to moderate that, please? Jack, if uh, you could make the announcement of our, our thing that we do, please. Sure. So um, we, I will now go through the list calling people who first are recognized as residents, and you will have two minutes to speak. Um, you just need to please let us know your full name and which development you're coming, calling in from. Um, and then I will go on to the next person. And then I will go to phone numbers last. Um, and then um, just so that everyone's aware that um, anyone who is a member of the public, that is a separate time for comments. And so we will go to you um, second after tenants. Um, so I'm going to start going down the list. Um, the first person that I see um, who is a resident is Angela Santanello. Hello. Just an update. The neighborhood watch uh, oversaw the flower beds in the in the front of the building for McDonald House and for the Salvo building. Um, most of the flower beds are completed at the Salvo building. We're, we still have a resident with a couple of other people helping around the flagpole area. So that should be done within the next week, possibly the beginning of next week. Um, McDonald House, we only had two individuals help. Um, so I do have a list to be able to provide um, to NHA with the name of all the individuals that were helping. Second, um, the new stoves that were um, installed do not work properly. I know that this is a state contract and I know that a lot of uh, residents have brought that to your attention. And I thank you for the, the expediency to get everything taken care of um however you know personally i feel like if we're going to have new stoves installed they should be working stoves they should be uh, you know as good as what we had if not better um just because we are um less fortunate and considered a poorer population we shouldn't have to get the bottom of the line type of uh, stove which is what we received through manny's through, through the state contract. So um, I know that several residents have raised that to the, to the um, housing authority. And I know that they're working on this diligently, but I just wanted to reiterate and put it out there publicly that, you know, whatever we can do with the state representatives to make sure that this is taken care of for future, for future renovations, et cetera, so that we're not harnessed with a stove that won't even boil water in over an hour's period of time. So that's not a good thing. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kierdoff, you have the ability to unmute yourself if you'd like to make a comment tonight. Hello, yeah. My name is Doug Kierdoff. I'm the vice president of the Tenants Association at Four Sander Apartments. And recently, we conducted a survey um, of our residents uh, asking them what were the matters that they considered most important and urgent for uh, around four sander and received um, we received uh, uh, a lot of feedback 25 there are 72 units at Four Sander, 25 of them responded. And the, uh, the things that were most important to them that, that ranked the highest, it was a survey where they were asked to choose uh, rank between one and five, one being the least important and five being the most important. The one that got most, uh, the, the most important uh selections was the smoking policy around four sander which is a matter to probably to take up with the manager but the second most was ventilation uh since a number of the ventilation fans around four sander do not work or do not work properly or are so noisy that they keep the tenants awake at night we felt that this was a matter of the of the utmost urgency among the 
the other things that that we found, like the key policy, which has everybody angry and bitter. So we looked into it, and there is an item on the budget for four sander to replace or repair the ventilation fans in the units for 2025. That's two years away. That's not good enough. And I would just like to read you, uh, this is from the Code of Massachusetts Regulation, Section 105, Subsection 410.220. It is the uh, an owner, any, any owner's uh, responsibility to keep habitable rooms and rooms with a toilet, bathtub, or shower, they shall have either one, windows, skylights, or doors through the exterior walls or roofs that can e be easily opened with a combined area of at least 4% of the floor area of that habitable room or room containing toilet, bathtub, or shower. Since none of the toilets, since none of the bathrooms have exterior access, none of them have windows or anything, that doesn't apply. Or two, mechanical ventilation capable of exhausting air to the outdoors. This is according to C -A CMR 410.5001, to keep the unit free from excessive moisture or the appearance of mold. Many apartments in Four Sander have mold in them. The Ventilators don't work, and the bathrooms get quite muggy. You get mold growing on your shower curtain and on your towel. And it's actually a, a Massachusetts statute that the, the uh, housing authority has to repair this, and it has to repair it in less than two years' time. And I'll just add that I think that the fact that we're all old and poor doesn't mean that this statute doesn't apply to us. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Kierdoff. Thank you. The next, the next person I have on the list that uh, is a resident and who, who can unmute themselves is Cheryl Cardinal. Uh, and Cheryl, if you're not interested in a comment tonight, um, you don't have to unmute yourself. Uh, I'm not on the list, so I don't know why my name was brought up. Uh, yeah, you're just one of the next individuals. Would you like to make a comment tonight or no? Oh, no, I'm fine. Okay, thank you. And then the next person on the list is calling in from a, a Galaxy Tab Pro. I'm not sure if you are a resident or not, but if you're on a Galaxy Tab Pro and you'd like to make a comment as a resident, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, okay, the next person is Jillian Fanion. Hello, I'm happy to be here. I, otherwise, I don't have any comments. Thank you, Jillian. Um, uh, Joella Tarbutton, are you, Jada, are you asking to be a resident as well? Yes, I'll take off my board hat and ask if I could do my uh, tenant hat. You're up. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Um, I just wanted to say I haven't been getting the board packet. I know I have a um, an email address, which I'm grateful for, but it's been, I've been having a hard time using it. And I think it's really important that I get information. And um, I have a, qu a question, and I think it started earlier today about uh, open meeting law. Um, it was the time, I have the exact date, but I got five compute things here I'm looking at on the exact date when a resident was mentioned, wrote a letter to Maryland, uh, and it involved me. And it was, it's also in the minutes, it was written, her name, my name, and that's when Maryland got real tough, you know, running these meetings, you know. And I thought the meetings were three minutes, not two minutes, but um, that was an open meeting uh, violation. I'd asked the chair if she was going to report it, but we did get a training from Jeff Driscoll and he looked through the uh, minutes and he said, we needed help. So luckily it's gotten a little better, 
But that happened and uh, it happened twice. It happened to someone who wrote a letter in uh, for Sander and it happened to a person who lived in McDon uh, McDonald's. But you mentioned the name and you mentioned the address. And I think it is really bad when we do stuff like that. We're putting tenants for whatever reason, we don't have to mention their name. And I think we are getting better. I did see the chair get better at stopping when some of the residents uh, have been known to mention name. I just don't know. We have people who've been on this board and been in this field for years and years and years. We have an attorney here. He never said anything about that. So we have all these people here and these are things that have been slipping away and slipping through. So I think that we should really think about that. Um, rules apply to everyone. And I do think that, um, I think we also need to uh, really apply the bylaws that we have. And also I, I heard people before the meeting started that you were saying it was only five people who had problems with their stove. I thought it was the whole floor. Uh, so I don't know who the five people, they're about the five people who probably responded. Everybody else is just like, this is what happens. Because I hear people saying, when you're poor, you shouldn't be treated this way. We're, we deserve decent, safe, sanitary housing. And I think like, for example, today I sent a note, my hot water in the kitchen sink isn't working. So these are common. And then one day, I think I even called the ED. Um, all of a sudden, hot water was gone for everybody, I think, on the third or fourth floor. Luckily, uh, somebody came out, but we're having we're having some problems here in our building. And that's just general maintaining and keeping it up. And I think that I worry. And that's why I particularly am worried about us taking over another building. We don't take care of the ones that we have here. So we got a lot of work to do with within ourselves. And I just don't think we're in any position to be going somewhere else, trying to run something else. And I don't know who tooted somebody's horn, but it's certainly offbeat. Thank you. Jack, um, you missed um, two residents. I, I know our views might be a little bit different. You have two more residents, um, Shannon, Scott, and Casey, if you could call on them, please. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm still going down the list. I'm, I'm just getting to caves now. It was on J. Um, I'm going in alphabetical order. So the next person on the list, coincidentally, is KC. Um, you have the ability to unmute yourself. Yeah, hi, I'm KC, Mary, Mary Chapman. I live at McDonald's. Um, first off, I agree with the key policy is being unnecessarily burdensome. I'm tired of saying it. And actually, I think most of the residents get tired of saying things over and over and over again, because it not only does it become redundant, it just disappears, it falls on deaf ears. The ventilation is a problem in the apartments. I, sometimes I feel like, where is the air besides opening the door? Anyway, I, I, I had a, an official grievance that I wanted to file. I took it to the property manager and she said, well, we've got questions. I said, well, tell me what the questions are. Well, we'll have to meet with me and Jack. For some reason, they couldn't get it together to meet with Amanda and Jack. So I want to tell you what the grievance was. I wrote it after Kara had written us this letter about how she was going in and, and imposing her particular gardening aesthetic on the gardens. And I think we were doing fine without somebody else's idea of beauty. We really were. And we were never ever asked about those signs or the picket fences. And I can go on for days about why those are insulting to people like us for days. I don't think you want to hear it. So I'm not going to say, but um, I'm also concerned about this lawyer dude because I've, I've known him at, in the office and I've also known him in the meetings. And at one meeting when he could not answer a very basic question on contracts, I just, I was like, oh my God, is he just playing thumb or is he really this dumb? But I do question that. I wonder, is he a housing attorney? And oftentimes going with the lowest bidder will cost you more money. It'll cost you more. I mean, you don't buy cheap shoes if you got bad feet. I mean, seriously. But um, I'm trying to read my writing because I forgot my type thing. Um, yeah, I'm instead of using like saying, well, Grow Food did this, I work with Grow Food. Grow Food had nothing to do with the signs or the picket fences, nothing. And for the property manager to tell people that it was their idea is, a, is an outright lie. So grow, uh, maybe NHA could own the fact that they went in and made these rules that totally had nothing to do with any tenants. They never asked us at all. If we were interested in picket fences or signs, we, we were fine without all this 
So that's it on me. Oh, and another thing I went and asked for a taller toilet because I have a really low toilet. The property manager said, oh, well, they're all the same size in the apartments. So I measured, they are not the same size. And I, and the first she said, I would have to get a note from my doctor. That's nuts. Anybody that knows me knows that I have trouble moving and the toilets aren't the same size I measured. And I will bring in the measurements if that's what it's gonna take, but that's ridiculous. That is a load of extra work. So y'all just please do your jobs. And it scares me to death to think of Kara moving to a position when she can't handle this one. I mean, got to take care of business at home first before you start something else. That's my thought on it. Thank you, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so then the next person, I'm not sure if they um, are a resident or not. They're just identified as Mary. Um, Mary, you have the ability to unmute yourself. I just need to confirm whether or not you're a tenant or not. No, I'm not a tenant. I'm just observing. Okay. Thank and you. Do you want to do a public comment or do you want me to skip you? No, please skip me. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Uh, and then the next individual on my list um, is Shannon Scott. Yes, here I am. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes? Yes. Hello? Yes. Okay. Yes, hi, I'm Shannon Scott. Some of you know me. Um, I've lived here. Well, who's that? It just, I just got a ding on this. But anyway, I've lived here 16 years. So I've been here a little while. I've seen a couple different administrations now. And I was thinking like, maybe we'd have a moment of silence for David Adamson at the beginning of this meeting. Um, because there are a few maintenance problems that I think maybe could be resolved if we still had a maintenance manager whose experience and training, you know, qualified them for the position. Um, because my bathroom has mold, um, like the other gentleman was saying before. Um, I had a state inspector come here about six years ago, six or seven years ago, and it should be in your records that my bathroom fan was not working wasn't exhausting the bathroom as it should. And like the other guy was saying, I don't have any exterior windows off my bathroom. So there's a lot of moisture in there and there's been mold buildup over the years. Uh, they came about six years ago to fix that mold, um, but they just covered over it. They didn't remove the mold that was in the grout. And I'd seen that, what, what is that ding ding? Whenever just, someone oh, joins the meeting, it oh, makes okay. a ding. I, see. I thought of my time limit. Um, but so, Kara, we talked about it, but the bathroom, it, it is, it's beyond repair. Um, but like I've taken pictures of other people's bathrooms who've had their mold covered over as well, right? It gets, gets in the grout. So the mold is so, so in my grout, it's so embedded in my grout that it's now popping tiles off the wall, which could cause leaks below me. But the thing is, we need to, need to back up because it's the roof leaks. I'm on the fourth floor and I'm on the fourth floor and somehow the water gets from the roof above the seventh floor down to my apartment, you know, like twice. I don't know if you can see my ceiling, but it leaked there about a week ago, leaked over my stove about a month ago, it leaked in the bathroom, it leaked by the front door. Um, so like repairing the mold problem in the bathroom probably wasn't a wise idea until the leak on the roof gets fixed. Jose mentioned maybe by the end of the summer, it gets repaired. Uh, some other of the maintenance guys mentioned it to me that, yeah, there is a problem up there, um, you know. Um, but then the other thing is we talked, Kara, and you said that, you know, I've been here 16 years and, you know, a little maintenance wouldn't be bad. I've paid increasing rent over the years. And um, you said I couldn't have this place painted like they couldn't do it. It wasn't possible to put drop cloths down. I spoke with a professional painter. And they thought they thought that was silly that a place couldn't be painted while somebody still lived in it. Um, anyway. Um, so uh, the stove, yeah, the stove doesn't work. Um, you know, I don't know what you're going to do, but a lot of people gave up really nice stoves. That, that's what was really strange. A lot of people, you know, it was, you, you forced people to take the stove. I don't know who actually gave that order, but people were forced to take the stove when they had much better stove. You know, style-wise, I don't know what the cost was. The cost on these stoves wasn't cheap, it didn't look like, unless you got a discount for bulk purchase. Um, but like I said, the stove doesn't work. We'll see what the hot plate can do. Um, what else we want to talk about? 
So yeah, the roof leaks, tiles falling off. Um, yeah, so we also wanted to know if like, well, a couple of things. When people come to these meetings, um, apparently people are getting rent discounts, like rent credits, like quite a few people. Um, and then they come to meetings and they speak positively about NHA. Well, of course they do. They're looking for another handout, right? Um, most people aren't aware of these stipends, these secret stipends, but they exist, apparently. Um, we once had a tenant association here and it was disbanded because uh, apparently all the officers were given $100 off their rent. That's what I was told. Mr. Scott, I just want you to know that you're at your two minutes. So if you're able to wrap up. Okay, well, I will try to wrap up. Well, I'll just leave it, um, well, wrap up. Yeah, see, I could have been here for days, but the other thing is as far as the uh, flower bed out front around the flagpole, can we please replace the black flag? That's the POW MIA flag. It's, it's frayed and shredded and it's, uh, I don't know, should be replaced. And actually the American flag there is frayed as well. Um, we could probably use a new one and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have two individuals who are call-in users. Um, if you press star six on your phone, you can unmute. Jack, I just want to let you know you're going out of order. So staff comment is next. Yeah, I just, I don't know if these two call-in users are residents or not. It only says okay. call-in user. Okay. Uh, just want to make sure. So star six will unmute yourself as a call-in user. Um, I'm going to give them just a second. Um, uh, seeing no other residents, um, I will go on to the next item, Chairperson Carney, if that's okay, which is um, staff comment. Yes, please. Um, all of the staff who are on, you have the ability to unmute yourself. Uh, I'm you like. was way over. Um, seeing no staff comment, I will advance to public comment. Um, and the first person on my uh, list has to is um, City Councilor Riley. Uh, you have the ability to unmute yourself. Can everybody hear me okay? Perfect. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the first caveat I just want to put out here is um, I could not find the agenda uh, for this evening. So I'm going to try to keep my comments uh, as vague as I can. Um, and then if, if for some reason I do end up veering into an open meeting law violation, could somebody please uh, let me know so that way I can save the remainder of my comments um, for later on tonight. During um, uh, um, Mr. Riley, during public comment, you can talk about anything. It doesn't have to be something on the agenda. Perfect. And actually, okay. just so that you know, when these items come up under new business, there really isn't a mechanism unless the board, unless we ask if there's somebody in the board would want to recognize you or any of your colleagues regarding the item that's on the table for discussion. So just so you know how that process would happen if you okay. want to use your time now to address that, that's fine, because I don't know whether people will move to recognize other members of the public during that portion of new business. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'll just go ahead and get started then. Um, yeah, so I mean, really what I'm coming here to do tonight is to introduce myself to your community. Um, you know, I'm a city councilor at large in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Um, I have, um, I'm actually celebrating this month my 20th year of transitional housing and housing policy experience. So this is something that I've dedicated my entire life um, to doing. I have a uh, master's in education and a master's of public policy and administration. Um, I studied social epidemiology and housing policy, um, or really what that means is how systemic structures of power control and oppression uh, manifest in public health crises. Um, so in my time with the city of East Hampton, um, I'm a former member of the Affordable and Fair Housing Partnership. Um, I served on the school reuse committee to craft an RFP for affordable housing development uh, prior to being elected a city councilor. And then, um, you know, in my time as a city councilor, I began working with 
um, tenants of the East Hampton Housing Authority um, after years of complaints about some of the conduct and mismanagement of the property and uh, lack of leadership from some of the board members. Um, so, you know, over the last two years, I've established relationships with um, a lot of the residents in the community. And, um, you know, I help guide them through the process of writing their bylaws um, and uh, conducting an election for a local tenant organization. So, you know, I have a lot of uh, invested time in making sure that, uh, you know, people in my community are being taken care of. Um, so, you know, really what I wanted to do is I wanted to say thank you for the um, opportunity of the Northampton Housing Authority um, to help out our community in the midst of a leadership freefall. And, um, and I would like the board and the executive director to know that a great deal of trust and understanding uh, needs to be rebuilt within my community. Um, you know, they have yet to actualize the full potential of their LTO, which would uh, need the Northampton Housing Authority uh, to help them bring those goals into fruition. So, you know, really, this is this is an olive branch that I'm extending to you all. Um, you know, I stand as an ally for all of the residents in my community and a willing partner of the Northampton Housing Authority. So, you know, I thank you so much for your efforts and dedication to the long road ahead. Um, and then, you know, if any of you have questions or you have um, concerns or strategies that you'd like to consider, um, you know, reach out to me. My email address is bryley at easthamptonma.gov. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Riley. The next person who has the ability to unmute themselves um, is called Kara Cole, I believe. I might be pronouncing that incorrectly. Um, if you'd like to make a public comment, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, again, there's a Galaxy Tab Pro. I'm not sure if that's a, a person from the public or not. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like to make a public comment. Um, and then the person after that is Judy Roncalli. Feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like to make a comment. Um, and then the person after that is Connie F's iPhone. Uh, if you'd like to unmute yourself, please feel free to do so now. All right. And then after that, I have Ruth Jensen. I have no comments at this time, um, but I, I will say hello. I'm a member uh, of the board um, in East Hampton. Thank you. Um, and then I have Susan Dudek, I believe. Um, feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like to make a public comment. And then I am going to just swing back one more time. The call-in users, um, feel free to press star six. Um, and then final call for anyone else. Um, I believe I've gone through the entire list, Chairperson Carney. Uh, you missed one Coney F's iPhone. I don't know who that is. I might have called it Connie. My apologies. Yeah, it's actually Connie. Yeah, I'm actually a city councilor in East Hampton also, and I'm just here to be supportive and, and however I can be supportive. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much. All right, I believe that's everyone. Thank you so much. Then I think the next item is the remarks, updates from the chairperson. Yes. Thank you, because I don't have that agenda typed out. Excuse me, do we have to uh, 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 vote on last agenda? To uh, Do we have to do that at all, last meeting? Are you asking about the minutes of the last meeting? Yes. I don't know, where did the minutes appear, uh, Jack? I don't have the agenda in front of me. It's right the minutes appear yeah. after the executive director's report. Okay, so what we'll have is that, and then, and then executive director, and then the uh, uh, approval of minutes. I haven't been getting my notes. I'd like for it to be mailed to me as well, because uh, I'm not getting them because of the so-called email issues. Okay, so the reason I had some remarks and updates, a uh, couple reasons. I know it's been a, a few meetings since I dealt with uh, some specific questions that uh, Vice Chair Commissioner Cancel had for me um, regarding what we have now as our 
standing committees or ad hoc committees and, and whatnot. And I did receive a very kind of a, um, a, a bulleted set of questions from uh, Vice Chair Cancel regarding those. And I wanted to make sure then for the record, this is where things stand now. In addition to that, I wanna point out that there'll be a couple of opportunities for us to um, consider what's coming up in terms of bylaw review and updating that's required by our regular bylaws. And we're just two years into, it says every two years we'll do that. So I wanna talk at the end of my little remarks about how we'll move into that towards, you know, over the next few months. And then also to point out to you that you'll be receiving um, an executive director evaluation form that I'm hoping people will get back as soon as they can. So I just wanted this, this is an email kind of exchange that I had with Commissioner Cancel. <clears throat> and I felt it was very important for me to um, kind of read my answers because they're probably not questions that appear only in uh, Commissioner Cancel's mind, but this might help everyone. So uh, Commissioner Cancel asks, when were the appointments for the grievance committee made and how did this process take place? And I'm making them official now in June, 2023 while I was elected chair in February of this month, of this year. He's, uh, Commissioner Cancel asks, did you reach out to current ad hoc committee members and ask if they wanted to continue serving in those roles or did you simply reappoint them? There are no ad hoc committees. Ad hoc means as needed. The next question was, what is your personal process as chair for determining who should serve in these roles? My answer, for grievance committee, the makeup is determined by state law. The resident member cannot be living in the same housing facility as the grievant. No member of the grievance committee may have had nor have had the appearance of ex parte conversations with the grievant. Next question, in regards to the grievance committee, who is Dr. Bossi? Concern, our bylaws clearly state that the grievance committee will have two board members. It makes no mention of anyone else besides board members. Whoever Dr. Bossi is, she's not a board member. This needs to be discussed, reviewed, in my opinion. And my answer is that state law oversees the makeup of the applicant grievance committee. It requires three panel members, one being a resident, one a board member, and an impartial member. Dr. Jessica Bossi is that impartial member. She's the founder of Independent Housing Solutions. And Dr. Bossi, as the area's homeless medicine doctor, has worked on an unhoused population on the streets, in the local shelters, and in homes where they live without any supportive services. Dr. Bossi is uniquely qualified to serve in this capacity, and we are extremely grateful for her service. Commissioner Cancel asks, how is this process fair to others on the board, our residents, and our city? when Mr. Brooks, Mr. Jones, and Dr. Bossi have already served on previous subcommittees. Concern, I personally brought up in previous meetings that Mr. Brooks has consistently been appointed to serve on these subcommittees. Therefore, we are essentially blocking others on our board from participating. You were present for those meetings when I raised these concerns. Why would you disregard those concerns and continue to appoint him to yet another role on our board? This process seems very rigged and not very transparent at all, specifically when other members of the board have asked about this in recent years and have asked to participate but have been ignored. Furthermore, these appointments have not been made known in writing nor otherwise to the board, residents, or the general public. And so my answer to Commissioner Cancel, well, to give a corollary example, in city government, I can only remember in 20 years, a single instance when a mayor has bumped a citizen volunteer from any of the numerous boards and commissions, the appointments for which she's responsible. Typically, the mayor reaches out to the committee member, also to the committee chair, asks if they continue to attend meetings and participate. She does not bump them simply because she has a stack of 200 applicants of other citizens eager to be appointed to a board. Similarly, regarding those boards that have an automatic position on other boards. For example, the housing partnership designates a representative to serve on the housing authority. And that is the position um, that Commissioner Cancel that you serve now. 
as the representative from the housing partnership on the housing authority. It would be highly unusual if the housing partnership were to bump a longstanding representative on the housing authority just because another member wants that position. In fact, if the housing partnership asked me as chair whether I would support bumping our current board member for another one, they would have to give some good and solid reason for me to sub support that substitution. So I find the question is accusatory. It's not only accusatory, it's hypocritical. I've not heard you suggest that you should be replaced on the housing authority board by the housing partnership because you've already served and other partnership members have not had a chance. Reappointments are the standard and nixing those reappointments without good cause is a very, very rare exception. And calling the very common practice of reappointment a rigged process and a discriminatory process, it's a reckless charge. Commissioner Cancel asks, where is it listed? It's not listed, I'm telling you now. Um, is Mr. Brooks also on the personnel committee? Members of the personnel committee are Commissioner Brooks and Commissioner Jones. And the question then, having just served, from this is Commissioner Cancel, having just served as chair for a couple of years, why was Ms. Richards selected to a subcommittee without giving someone else the chance to do so? Concern, this gives the perception that we don't care about everyone on the board having equal opportunity to participate and this body having a balanced sharing of power. It also speaks to our refusal to engage people of color on the board in a more meaningful and inclusive way. So regarding the grievance committee, I cannot, and as the time of my writing, could not at the time of the writing, appoint either Commissioner Tarbutton or Commissioner Cancel to the grievance committee because I believe they've had conversations about the content of the grievance with the grievant. And whether that happened or not, there's at least an appearance of that. And state law prohibits those who have had or who have the appearance of having had discussions with the grievant, it prevents them from hearing the grievance. I know for Order a fact- information. Order of information. Now let me finish my, at, at the oh, end of my- Calm down, calm down. Okay, what fine, grievance? calm down. What grievance? At the end of my remarks, I will answer questions. Well, actually, I won't actually answer questions. I'm just gonna tell you that I'm gonna finish these remarks. So state law prohibits those who have had the appearance of having discussions with a grievance from hearing their grievance. I know that neither Commissioner Brooks nor Commissioner Richards, who are on the grievance committee, have had any communications with the grievance. And at the time, there was only one grievance. So the, act, the next question, I'll go on. Why is Mr. Jones appointed to the CPC again without considering other candidates? And I apologize to those who are holding their heads because this is difficult. Was it as difficult for me to read as it is for me to answer? Mr. Jones has served on the CPC since its inception in the same way that the mayor continues to reappoint members to various committees overseen by the mayor. I don't have an interest in bumping a long serving member in favor of a newer one, just for that reason. Commissioner Cancel goes on to ask me, is it because he's a union rep? If so, I'd like you to know that I too am a union rep for the local number 263 chapter of the SEIU <clears throat> Service Employees International. I'll answer then that Jeff Jones served as the labor rep on the housing authority. That's what he serves now in, his, in the position he serves now. Doesn't have anything to do with the CPC. If you wanna ask the mayor to substitute your name as the labor rep to the housing authority, you may do so. But there is state and federal law that require the mayor seek those nominations from the area labor federation. She can ask for a couple of names if she's not satisfied with that. If you want to be the labor rep, contact the Western Mass Area Labor Federation and ask they remove the name of Jeff Jones and use your name instead. But I'd ask you first to consider your claim that you're a union representative of SEIU Local 263. Are you a union representative? Are you, are, are you a dues paying member in good standing? Likewise, and then the question itself, it's accusing me, it's accusatory. It's based on the premise that all of our appointments should rotate. It's wondering what's going on because there's there's usually no explica explanation of anything that we do. There's a lot of things that go on uh, behind, behind doors. And this is probably a great learning 
experience. I'm really glad well. that you're going to let me finish my remarks and then you'll have a recording of them because all of our communications will happen open and transparently. I'll come, I'll finish my remarks and great, then I'll end great, them because great. we this have a really lot of why are you yelling. Why are you yelling? I'll finish my remarks and then I'll go on because we have many people waiting for us to go on to the rest of the business. So I'm going to continue the answer to that question is it's based on the premise that all appointments should rotate. And I find it hypocritical. You'd ask me to rotate committee assignments when you haven't asked the housing partnership to rotate you out of the housing authority appointment. And I'll note that you haven't also asked the mayor to rotate you off the housing partnership because there's a lot of people who have an interest in serving. And she has a stack of applicants on her desk. And to suggest that this is a rigged process and that it's discriminatory when it's the same process by which you continue to serve, not only on the housing authority, but also on the housing partnership, it seems self-serving at best. It is not I who's attempting to rig this process, but rather it is you with the full knowledge that you are have an appearance of ex parte conversations with a grievance, and you want me to put you on the grievance panel, and it's you who supplied me with inaccurate information about your official capacity with SEIU Local 263 in the hopes I'm going to bump you for more qualified members and place you on the personnel grievance committee. So I'm not interested in having further conversations. I wanted to answer those questions. It may seem as though I'm yelling because I was I feel as though I was falsely accused and we will have no opportunity for a last word. I apologize, but those are my decisions, my appointments for the committee and you can point of information. And I'm done point with of information. Point I'm of done information. Point of information. Yes, if what you, is your question? Okay. First of all, could you lower a decimal please? You don't have to yell at me. We're just asking and I think that if any of this board had done one of the things I suggested about diversity, equity, and inclusion classes, you would know that. You have lauded about 10 microaggressions, and I wish you would learn a little bit about that. I wish Thank you would. Thank and you that's so all much. I have to say, because you haven't done it. Thank you very much. You should. Thank you very much for your comments, although I'm not asking for any comments or questions at this time. As I said, these are my remarks, and that's my appointment process. I'm moving on to the next item of business. You're the, and you're the only one allowed to do that, huh? That is, I'm sorry. That's, but you can, that's very interesting, very interesting. You can look at the bylaws. But you are, you are showing yourself to everyone out here. And so time and then, will tell. She's best friends with Marilyn and the band and talk about who cannot be trusted with each other. Ms. Now, Manager this team. This is my meeting. And when you are chair, you can run the meeting as you like. This yes, is, we couldn't even have another candidate because you've been on student council and I tried to nominate someone else and y'all all got crazy about it. And I'm sure that y'all went and talked about this. Talk about, oh, an ED calling me and asking me to vote for somebody, you know, your best friend. How difficult is that? And you haven't done anything about it. Miss woman who's been on the counselor, city council, you should know better. I'd be ashamed of yourself, racist. Take the class, microaggression, racist, and, and understand that yourself. And if you get mad because somebody's bringing this up to you, that's a microaggression. Listen, maybe you could learn something. But if you know everything, you mad good. So I'll ask if we can move on to the next item of business. Uh, Director Leeper, you are muted. Sorry about that. Yes, the next item of business is the executive director's monthly summary uh, for June 2023. Uh, our GPR collected was 217234. Total rent collected was 1954225, which was 90%. The delinquency of 87067 is cur all current residents. We had 78 public housing certifications for the month. We had 57 section 8. Um, all but three of the section eight um, uh, recertified and it's due to waiting on documents. Our waiting list um, in the federal applications, we have uh, 96 one bedroom, 34 two bedroom, 23 three bedroom, two four bedroom and 58 in section eight. The state applicants family wait list has 15,970. The elderly disabled list has 4,172. 
public housing had three move outs and section eight had 12. Uh, public housing had four move ins and section eight had five. Uh, public housing on notice is one, three uh, end of month vacant um, ready and five unready for a total of eight, six of which are pre-leased. Uh, number of make readies completed over the month was four, three of which were rehabs. We took in 723 work orders. We had 70 incomplete from the prior month. We completed 672 work orders and we have 51 outstanding. Last month, there were no uh, resident issues brought up. So there's no res uh, executive director resident follow-up. Um, the rent information seminars began at each property, introducing new ways residents can pay rent and over 100 residents signed up for automatic payments. Additional incentives and informational sessions will happen in July. So ends the executive director report. Board of information. Yes. Uh, in, in your report, sorry, go ahead, recognize me, uh, Chair. Yes, what's your question? ED, in your report, you said there were, oh, I'm sorry, no tenant, what'd you say? I'm sorry, I, I wanna make sure I hear that right, heard that right. Let, so part of the report as requested by the board were to have the follow-ups from any of the prior month's issues brought up at the board meeting. Last oh. month, I did not have any issues that were brought up by residents at the board meeting. Okay, because I know a lot of people, there was a whole big fiasco with the garden. Luckily, it got a happy, happy result. Thank goodness for the uh, Grow Food there were no, Commissioner Tarbutton, there were no issues at the board meeting. Those are, that's just what that section is about only. Only oh. residents that brought up issues at the board meeting. Okay, I was a resident and I'm almost certain I brought that up. It was not brought up as an issue at the board meeting. I verified that earlier today. Okay. Well, I know I spoke. We can go through it again. I'll look it up. But I know I brought up the issue with the board and I remember thanking Grow Foods Northampton. And I was against the communication, the letter that you sent. It it wasn't, um, it was upsetting. But luckily, I to Grow Foods North, uh, Northampton, Grow Foods Northampton, uh, they did really well and it turned out to be really wonderful. And I just, uh, I just wondered, are you are is, are people getting paid at all for the for doing to doing this great landscaping out front? I know that's probably a different question, but I'm asking. And neighborhood watch, are they getting paid? I'm just curious, and because we have the uh, fiscal thing, and I wanted to know where what category that went in. Madam Chair, do you want me to answer these questions that are not part of my report? Oh, uh, I'm, oh I'm, 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 I'll take it back. You don't, you don't have to answer. <laughs> If you could limit your questions to the report, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking for my own page here now. Yeah, if you could limit your questions to the part of the report that the executive director just um, read. I just did. Okay. Then are there any other questions or comments? Can I move on to the next item of business? The next item of business is um, unfinished business. Okay, hearing no one finished. You want to read it, please? Will you read it? I'm, I, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. May may I be recognized? Yes, please. Um, the next item is the approval of the May 2023 minutes. Okay, excuse me. I, the only point I'm saying is I don't have that screen in front of me right now. So thanks for reminding me that right after that is the approval of minutes. And if you don't mind, I'll ask you to then point out what the next item, I believe it's unfinished after the, is it unfinished after the? Yes, after the unfinished? approval of the minutes is, uh, is old business and there is none. I know, and then I can just move on to new business. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, thanks. Thanks for the reminder. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? No, I, is there, oh, you're going to ask questions. Go ahead. Sorry. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the May 2023 meeting? Motion to approve the May minutes. I, I didn't hear that. What, what? Motion to approve the May minutes. Okay, I heard one person make the motion and I heard another person make the motion again. So I'm Same not going to count that as a motion and a second. No, it's the same person. Same person. It just, huh? oh, oh, okay. So I'm sorry, Commissioner Brooks, did you move to approve the me meeting minutes? Yes. Okay, Brooks. is there a second? Second. 
Okay, thank you, Commissioner Brooks. I know Commissioner Richards was trying to say second, but was muted. Okay, so moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the May 23rd meeting. Are there any um, uh, additions, additions, corrections, or deletions? Yes, I guess my question was, when, uh, when have you started working on training for our tutorial for the board members? So when we look at a thing financial, we know what we're looking at other than just relying on what you're saying is true. I'd like to know more about it. And I want to know, have you looked into that? Because every time we say next year, let's just sign this off now. But I want to know, what have you done, Kara? <clears throat> oh, you're asking that question to, to Director Leeper? Well, I can ask you if you know. Well, no, I'm, what I'm asking is, what we're looking at is the meeting, the minute yes. meeting minutes. And are you saying there's an inaccuracy? There's something in the meeting minutes that is. Well, yeah, yes, yes. I, I mentioned last time. I want to know where on the part where it had resident services. Is that where you're paying uh, the uh, neighborhood watch? And how much do you pay? And how many other people do you pay? Also, people who are working in the gardens. And how much is allotted for that? Um. Could you tell me where in the minutes you're looking? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to open the minutes. No, I'm looking at the report. You know, we had Mr. Was it Gary LaPace that he was here? And so there was a part of it that said uh, resident services. There was also a part that said professional development. And so I was wondering on the resident services or professional, where is it when you pay Neighborhood Watch and how much do you pay it? And where is it categorized? I can I do not know where on the minutes you're speaking. There is nothing on these minutes that talks about resident services coordination, right. coordination or any of that. So right. that's what's what I'm on, looking for. That's what I'm asking list. you to look under. Which category? Is it 4410? Is it the one that he went? I'm trying to figure out in the list that we had of all the categories, which we've never really had any training on. We just took what he said. Where do you put that you pay for neighborhood watch or for people who are helping to guard? I think I it's to, I need to I just like to know. I need huh? to interject Commissioner Tarbutton because what sure. you're referring to is a different document. You're referring to a document that's not the minutes themselves, right? You're referring to a document that was the financial given by, right. by the financial. And it's not, we're doing so a let us, minimized let us get the, of, them, let us of get, the minutes. I'm sorry. Let us ahead. get that let us all get that document up so that we can look at the same thing. Thank you. So are you go? it's not under the minutes because we're all looking at the minutes now under our tab. I haven't gotten it. So you haven't been sending me information. So I can't even, I'm going by my memory. I, I, most, cer I most certainly have been yeah, sending you, information. You sent it to an program. email that I haven't been able to get. I told you to send the one at Yahoo, which you refused to do. I said, send it to both. You know, I'm not going to answer this right now. I'm going to okay. say, Commissioner Tarbutton, we can only deal with the matter that is on the table for discussion now. The matter on the table for discussion is the listed minutes that you have. You don't, I know that you have not gotten your package. No, I had to stop the minutes because you and Kara were sending harassing, gaslighting emails to me, begging you to stop. So I had to get a new email because that was my personal email for you to stop. I have not been able to get the one that uh, NHA has. If you hadn't been harassing, I would be able to get this information and gaslighting and denying because I disagree with you. Same stuff that you did, just did with Commissioner Cancel is the same thing I asked you. And I have a question from that that's not being answered because you're running the meeting. Uh, a chairperson, Carney, if I could jump in here, this is way beyond this agenda item. You're not a board this member. Is, this is the minutes, additions, subtractions, inaccuracies, nothing that's more, nothing I, that's less. That's the point that I'm trying to make mm -hmm. to the board. I'm trying to make the point that we have an item on the table for discussion and the vote. And that item is to vote on the minutes that we have received. I understand that Commissioner Tarbutton has not received the minutes and does not have the whole, and actually doesn't have anything on the packet. I'm at a little bit of a loss as to know what to do with that information, whether we should consider suspending the, the approval of the minutes until the next, because it's not, it's not that Perfect. important that we approve Perfect. the minutes for this meeting. Yeah. However, by next, me, by next meeting, if it means that the packet needs to be sent via snail mail, we I can- I would agree with that, thank you. So, so if that's the case, can we uh, maybe can we ask for a motion to suspend this until the next meeting where where uh, Commissioner Tarbutton will have had the opportunity to read the minutes 
and then be able to fully participate in the discussion of whether there need to be additions, subtractions, or deletions. So Thank moved. you, Chair. So, so what, 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 could I hear? Oh, that's motion. Okay, is there a second? Second. second. Moved and seconded to move this discussion about the meeting minutes to the July meeting. All those, well, I guess you have to call a roll, please. Yes, just a moment, please. Um, a motion by Edgar Cancel and seconded by Joella Tarbutton, is that correct? Commissioner Brooks. Commissioner Brooks, Jim Brooks, I'm sorry. Uh, to table the minutes to the July meeting um, and roll call vote to table the approval of the May 2023 minutes. Chairperson Carney. Oh, yes. excuse me, point of information. I would like for you to have it mailed to me as well as the two emails that you have because the one that you gave me isn't working properly. We cannot we cannot send any emails to an, a different address than the one that's on file with Chapel. You used to, you did. I know. Well, 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 yes, but you don't, email, don't email, mail it to me. That may I make sure I get it. Mail it to me. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. Would you, Madam oh. Chair, would you like me to go back to calling the roll? Yes, please. Okay, Chairperson Carney to table yes. minutes to July. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. No. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. Okay, so we'll deal with the matter of the minutes at the next at the next meeting. Sure. So the next item on the agenda is beginning in new business because there's no old business. And I believe the first item is the agenda item to, you wanna read that agenda item please, Director Lee? Certainly. Yes, um, I brought before you um, a three-year contract for legal services uh, and that the Board of Commissioners approves the low bid for legal services with attorney Thomas O'Connor out of Southampton, Mass which is the lowest and reasonable bidder in the amount of 104,000, which was obtained by the agency. All require ad required advertisements were run on April 10th, 2023, and general sealed bids were received on April 28th, 23 at 10 a.m. The selected general counsel will provide 20 hours per week of office time at the offices of Northampton Housing Authority, as well as litigate cases on behalf of the agency. The bidders were evaluated by a three-person panel including the executive director, the chief accounting officer, and members of the Section 8 department who don't regularly interact with the current council. The results of the, uh, of the evaluation were presented to the board. Further, that the board authorizes the executive director to take all actions necessary and proper to award this contract. I'd like to note that we added 12 hours a week. Um, it, at, um, it was originally eight. Um, and we did this because um, although the contracted hours are eight, uh, when the uh, hours go over, we pay by the hour. And so uh, based on the number of evictions due to non-payment, um, mostly there have been a few for cause, uh, we've gone way over the number of hours. Um, so this increases the office hours to, um, to 20. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, so I'm asking for a motion to put on the floor to accept a low bidder for legal services for three years. And motion, to, motion to approve. Okay, so the motion made by Commissioner Richards, is there a second? Second. Seconded Commissioner Brooks. And um, before I open it up for discussion, I want to point out that in addition, when we got our notice of the meeting, I want to ask actually the um, executive director to read from uh, the notice because I am, I'm a little concerned now that um, Commissioner Tarbutton did not receive this notice. Is that yeah. correct, Commissioner Tarbutton? Is it correct that Commissioner Turner? Yes, indeed, I never received it. Okay. And I don't know where it was published. Which papers was it published in? 
So, so I'm not. I, I, let me just reiterate my question. I'm just talking about the email notice that everyone received saying Monday, May 20, Monday, June 26th board meeting. No. And it's, it has all of our attachments and it has the Zoom link and everything. Mm -hmm. And what we're hearing now is that Commissioner Tarbutton has not been in receipt. Well, she's been in receipt at an email address that she cannot access. And she has now given instruction that all future communications come by snail mail and not by the email to the address that she cannot access. So, so Commissioner, uh, Madam Chair, if I understand correctly, you'd like me to read the email that was sent out? Well, I'm not sure what, yeah, I could ask that, but I'm also asking, sure. If you could read that email, that might then help, but I, I'm not sure whether Commissioner Tarbutton feels like she is able to participate anyway in any of this without having been in receipt of any of the materials. Okay, so the email was sent um, 16, 17 for uh, recipients, Thursday, June 22nd at 9.56 a.m. Good morning, everyone. We have several important items on the agenda. The first item of new business is the legal services contract. We went out to bid in accordance with the regulations on 41023. Our current provider, Attorney O'Connor, came in as low bidder. Given that some of you are residents and may have been involved in litigation for or against the Housing Authority where Attorney O'Connor has represented the Housing Authority, it would be a conflict of interest that pre pre prevents you from participating in the discussion or vote regarding this matter. That is the purpose of letting you know this information. To suggest uh -huh. that you have ever been a party to litigation with us, you would need to recuse yourself. Chapter 121B, Section 6 states that board members <laughs> not participate in any discussion with, which affects his or her personal interest. This certainly may fall into that situation. 760 CMR 4.03, 4A through C addresses the issue as well. Subsection B advises that if there is any question, input from the Ethics Commission should be sought. Or if it's appropriate for you to recuse yourself, you may call the Ethics Commission to get their input. Their number is 617-371-9500. The attorney of the day returns all calls within 24 hours. And since our meeting is on Monday evening, there are three days until then, which will be more than enough time. My sense here is that we are better off safe than sorry. So better to err on the side of caution. Yeah. Okay, I'll ask. I'll ask if that's we, we can end the end it right there because well, the other two the other two paragraphs go on to two other items. But okay. the reason I like to, just a minute, the reason that I wanted you to read that first couple of paragraphs is I want to know whether or not. Um, well, first of all, we don't know whether people have had the time to find out whether or not they need to recuse themselves in this matter especially Commissioner Tarbutton, who's just hearing this for the first time as it's read right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bit concerned about us going forward with that without- I, I, yeah, I have a question regarding that point of information. Because my question is, I think if I heard it right, it says, oh, if you residents have had some contact or whatever where he had to represent the housing, recuse yourself. Uh, I would, I'm not recusing myself. But I think that my question is, if do you, Ed, recuse yourself in even bringing this up? Because Attorney O'Connor walks your dog on the property. So my question is, is when he's walking your dog, am my tenant money paying for that? Because I've seen it done and people have pictures of it. So if he's supposed to be doing here and you're just giving him some extra hours, that's not in care of your dog. And before the meeting start, you just had somebody, what's her name, Kimball? says she's walking your dog. That is not in their job description. And if they're doing that, you need to, we need to look at somebody else. Connor, I understand that you're also, is it a, a jump professor at HCC? Is that you? Is that true? Is that you? Because if that's the you, the recommendations were not stellar from the students. So I would like to see who else applied. Not just because, oh, it's easier this. No, 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 no. And what does he do? And I'd like to know what he's doing besides walking your dog. I want to interrupt here just to ask, are you, if you're speaking to the merits or are you speaking to against, are you speaking for or opposed to, because it sounds like you're starting to give opinions. And I want to know whether 
In fact, this is a matter that we may need to give you the opportunity to find out whether or not you need to recuse yourself. Well, firstly, I'm not recusing myself. And then secondly, I did contact. No, would you like no, to no, you, if you were to recuse yourself, then it should have been recused when the ED chair's pick got her on there where she got money for it. She got the time off and then year. So that should have been recusal. You don't just point it at people like the two people. That would be three residents that are here. And, and two people of color and one person with a disability. So are you saying that we can't be a part of this? No, 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 no. The recusal should no, be- No, I, I think, excuse me. Again, let me, just, again, let me, before you, yeah. again. Well, I didn't, you do what you want to do. No one is so ever required to, to recuse. No one is ever required to recuse oneself. Of course, I'll recuse myself when uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice Thomas recused okay. himself. No. Okay. All right, no, I'm just, we just want to make sure you know what it says. So no one- well, Send it to me, yes. And then I will go check because I will go and check into this. And I think that what the second thing is that it's the ethics department, I'm glad we're being so ethical, but the ED does ethics not apply to her when she's calling me up a new, a new board member, asking me to vote for her chair choice and not another. And talking about another former uh, tenant who she said was kicked, evicted, housing manager doing that and she's still here. Ethics? What did ethics do about that? And what are your ethics? This is not a conversation about the ethics now. It's just about whether or not we proceed with the discussion. I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the discussion and proceed with the vote because- oh, no, I object to this because I, I haven't- I, I want people first to speak. If there are people who want to speak to the merits of the proposal, they may do so. And then I'll go back- Can you to ask Elkana, does he walk her dog? And is that part of his job description? I don't think that that's a, uh, a question that As I- As you said, that's a valid question. question because if my tenant money is paying for him to walk our dog, I have a problem with that. Is Do you walk our dog on McDonald campuses? Do you want me to show you a photo? I don't think that that's a question that this is not a grilling of the- person. That's not his job. That's not his job description. And we two, understand, we understand what you're saying and I need to move this on. I think that I'm going to move on to another board member and then you're going to go do topic. whatever you want to, but it is and not then, right. <laughs> and then I'll give you another opportunity to speak against the proposal. Um, is there somebody who would like, uh, Commissioner Richards, you have your hand raised? You need to unmute yourself, though. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just wanted to move the question forward because, you know, uh, the objections are not having to do with the recusal. So I think your question was about recusal. And if uh, Commissioner Tarbutton does not recuse herself, that's fine, then we, but we need to move the question. I would ask if there are people who wanna speak in favor of the question and then opposed to those who wanna speak in oppose to the question. So anyone who wants to feel, speak in a favor of the proposal. Oh, I, we're not going to give me time to read it over. You're not going to do that now. Point of information. Chair. Uh, I, I'm sorry. What are you asking for? You'd like some time to read it over now? Well, oh, you're not going to give me the packet. You're not going to give me time to contact ethics, contact uh, Jeff Driscoll, contact Nairo, contact uh, Attorney General, and contact the- If, uh, you, want to, if you want to ask for that, if you want to ask for that, I can ask- I would like that time. I just got this now. Is there someone who would like to offer a proposal that would give Commissioner Tarbutton the time she requests and maybe take this up at the next meeting? Oh, Commissioner Cancel. Uh, yes, thank you. That was uh, precisely um, my concern. I was uh, wanted to propose uh, that we move this uh, to next month's meeting uh, to uh, give us an opportunity, give uh, Commissioner Tarbo an opportunity to review the materials. Okay, is there a second to move this to the July meeting? Uh, it looks like um, Commissioner Tarbutton is second. Okay, now we're only speaking to this postponement to the July meeting. That's the only thing we're speaking, not to the merits of the proposal or against it. So anybody have anything to discuss regarding the the motion to move this to the July meeting. Is it? And if nobody has anything further to say, 
I'll ask if we can take the roll on whether to move this to the July meeting. Yes, on moving uh, to accept the low bidder for legal services of three years to the July meeting, uh, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbuck. This is to move it to July. Is that what we said? I'm sorry. Is that, yes. Yes. Commissioner Richards. No. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that motion carries and we're moving on to the next item, which is, I believe, the three year contract with East Hampton. Can you read the motion, please? No, I'm sorry, um, Madam Chair. The next item is the uh, four year contract with the union. Okay, regarding the union contract with the uh, District Council 35. Yes, ma'am. Is ma there a motion to accept the four year contract with the Northampton Housing Authority and the International Union of Painters and Allied Trades, District 35. Is motion there... to accept. Okay, motion to, to move that contract for discussion. Uh, is second. there a second? Second, I'll second. Moved and seconded for discussion on the table now is the contract. And maybe I'll ask Director Leeper if you can be available for any questions that commissioners have regarding the contract that's been negotiated between the housing authority and the painters. Point of information, did you, that come in part of the uh, 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 package? Because I hadn't gotten that either. Oh, I don't think, was the contract itself part of the? Um, no. I would like to see it. I'd like to see the, that. The contract wasn't part of, the contract itself wasn't part of the, of the board member packet. And usually it isn't, the whole contract isn't, but really typically a synopsis of the discussion and the agreement that's been made between the two parties, the housing authority and the painters district council. So do you want to give some sort of synopsis on that um, negotiation sure. then at least director Lieber? Yes, your motion tonight to ratify the contract between the Northampton housing authority and our maintenance department employees um, as represented by district 35 of the painters union the contract would be effective July 1st, 23 to June 30th of 27. The proposed contract calls for a COLA increase in current pay of 4% in July of 2023 and 4% on each July, July 1st of each year in the contract with the possibility of up to an additional 2% upon annual performance review. Further, there is the potential of an additional 2% if the team meets the additional, uh, the annual turnover ready dates days of 25 days. It should be noted that these are general cost, generous cost of living adjustments in the public sector at this time. However, housing authority maintenance employees have had their pay governed by the Department of Labor and Industries based on union contracts signed in the private sector. Our current wage rates for maintenance employees have remained stagnant over the last three years due to the pandemic. In the negotiating wage rates, I have attempted to remain within the framework of what I am seeing being negotiated in the public and private sector, in addition to taking into account that over the last three years, the increased increases remained at 2%. For example, the new wage weight for Carpenters Union increases the wage rate of that trade 8% in the current year for their private sector contracts. Arguably, the private sector wage rate compared to the public sector wage rate has various components, health and welfare benefits, etc. But the trend seems to be fairly significant increases being negotiated by the trades. Those trades rates drive the D uh, Department of Labor and Industries wage rate, which serves as a minimum wage for our maintenance staff. So while doubling the COLA 2% to 4% may seem high for a public sector increase, I believe time will prove that we are close to the minimum we will need to pay. Other significant features of the, con uh, of the proposed contract provide a mechanism for staff members to be rewarded with a longevity incentive of 1.5% increase upon anniversary of 10, 15, and 20 years respectively. The proposed contract changes the amount that the employee who is on call on nights, weekends, and holidays. The amounts for weekdays and weekends increase by $15 a day each to $45 and $50, and the holiday stipend dollars to $150. 
This is in addition to the time spent on any call service by the employee. The proposed contract also increases the boot allowance from $100 to $175. As we know, uh, the cost of, uh, uh, of items um, ha has skyrocketed since the pandemic. The proposed contract moves the deadline also of the vacation buyback from April 15th to June 15th, which allows two months more time to be able to take vacations before they have to decide whether or not they can take them rather than buy them them out. I urge the commissioners to ratify this contract so that it can be put into place July 1st, 2023. Thank you. Okay, um, I see, a, uh, yes, Commissioner Tarbutton. You know, I have so much respect for the workers that are here, you know, the maintenance workers, the painters. I mean, they thank goodness for them for keeping this place. It's beautiful and, and I don't know exactly how much they, they do make. And I think that whatever's conditioned by the labor board, I think they are deserving of that plus a little bit more. Um, I just feel like I'm not uh, I'm not comfortable making a decision uh, with this so soon. And I, I get really nervous when it's like, okay, today is the 26th on the 1st. That's when it goes in effect. Why don't we get this information so we can look at it and even talk about it? I think somebody, which we won't talk about, they said, want to talk about groups and committees. That's when we can talk about stuff like this so we can see what their contract. I would like to see a union person, a staff person talk in these meetings so we would know other than what we're being told by the ED. I, I on my heart level, give them what they want and then some. I'd rather give them that than the uh, administrative staff uh, 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 raises and more bonuses and all that. These are the people that tennis see every day Say hello, thank you. I appreciate everything that you do. I, you know, I, I, I just think I'd like to vote on it. I just don't have enough information, and I'd like to have some more information to vote on it. And I do not like the fact that you're giving it to me the day of or the four days before it's supposed to be in effect. To be in effect, so that's not right. That's poor, poor planning and management on that sense. And I'd like to know more. I'd like to get packets, and I'd like to get my information in a timely manner. But this is a heartstring because I want them to get what they need. And then some. Commissioner Jones. Thank you. So um, what the board needs to understand is that um, this is a proposed agreement. This is a tentative agreement. I bargain these every week. And what it means is that the leadership of the union in question, the leadership of the workers, the representative of the workers has bargained this contract in good faith with the executive director and whoever the ED has with her at the time. And they, and they have reached an agreement. That means that both sides approve the agreement. The board is being asked to sign off on the agreement. There was a highlights, I think a one pager, that was provided that basically Director Leeper just read off. Um, from um, the cost of living increases and the longevity bonuses and the on-call bonuses, I think it's a very positive contract. Um, and I'm seeing similar numbers in the type of work that I do. <clears throat> and just for the record, so no one misunderstands, this is not my union. This is the painter's union. Um, and in the past, we have had um, um, a space for um, those workers to come and talk, and they have in the past. And that's part of why we say, is there any staff comment? But for whatever reason, um, that bargaining unit um, has chosen to um, express itself through traditional means. Uh, through their union representative and their leadership, which is or their stewards, which is perfectly normal. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner before, Jones. Before I go back, before I go back to you, Commissioner Tarbutton, may I ask if there are any other um, board members who want to speak for or against? Yes, Commissioner Cancel. Um. So, yeah, so this is problematic for me. For instance, not having access to this information 
uh, before making uh, a, a decision or authorizing anything or signing off on anything is problematic. And the fact that some board members have information about it and others don't, uh, it's really problematic. Um, and uh, I also agree with uh, Commissioner Tarba in that getting things a few days before the deadline is not, it's not good planning. It's not good management. Um, so because basically what you're doing is you're making the decisions beforehand Right. And expecting and expecting to for the board members to be a rubber stamp or or come in here and just approve assuming that everyone's gonna approve. Um that's not cool. That tells me that my voice doesn't matter. That tells me that my role on <laughs> this board um is um insignificant. Um, Madam thank you, Commission. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. Thank you. Before I go to you directly, Libra, I just do want to point out for context for people that these parties only finished their negotiations between the last Thursday. meeting we had, between the last meeting we had and this meeting. We would have had to call a special meeting of the whole board the day after they decided they came to their agreement. That's what happens is they come to their agreement. And then they come to the board. The only way we could have had more time is if we tried to have a special meeting of the board between our last board meeting and this meeting just to deal with this item. And so I understand the arguments that I'm hearing back from people. I hope that they aren't arguments to vote against the negotiated contract between the workers here at the Housing Authority and the Painters Union. They got together and they came up with the final word, Commissioner Cancel. They came out with it after our last meeting, after right. our last May meeting. Right, that's okay. But what is forcing us to vote on it right now? They have a deadline. The painters, the painters have a deadline. And we, we they are holding us, the Housing Authority, to ratify the contract so that they can ratify the contract. They are holding us to the so, deadline. So then the question again is how come point of, point board members, we don't get the information, even as soon as you have it and before you expect us to make a vote, even if it's, let's say, two days ago that just became about and they agreed, well, two days ago that should have gone to board members and explained, hey, on, on Monday we're going to ex expect you to vote on this. Please review it. Okay, I understand that there are some, I understand that there are some complaints about the timing and that there is a discussion now about whether or not board members should get every item as it's decided day by day and get emails day by day regarding what things that are happening rather than the consolidated email that we get just before the meeting. I don't know that that's something that we could talk about in terms of our bylaws review and in terms of way we want to do this, but I hope, I would hope that you wouldn't use it as a reason to vote against, it sounds like it's not an, an, an opposition. It sounds like we have a couple of abstentions going on here. And I understand that. I am going to vote in favor, obviously, of this because I want to move forward because they have negotiated in good faith. The painters negotiated with us in good faith with the understanding that we'll come back to them. So I'm going to, because it's not, I, I mean, it, none of these are, I mean, none of these are huge changes to the contract, except for the, you know, the items. And it's it's not typically something that the that the housing authority board would do would come back after we've already given somebody the the authority to negotiate on our behalf, which is what we've done and we always do. We don't typically come back and say, wait a minute, why did you say five cents when it's when they have spent the hours and hours in the room? Now I'm gonna turn, I know that but I know that Commissioner Richards wants to speak on this and Commissioner Tarbutton wants to speak on it. Yes, Commissioner Richards. Uh, yes, I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you, uh, uh, Commissioner Jones, for your input on this, and also Commissioner Carney, uh, Chair. Uh, I just want to point out that if any of you have watched City Council, this is business as usual. We, we depend on our d executive director to do things like this on a day-to-day -day level. Yeah, and we, we depend on their decisions. And yeah. 
so it is not out of the ordinary that we, uh, uh, you know, uh, vote on this. I will be voting yes because I trust in the decisions of the unions. I do trust. I trust in our executive director, yeah. and I, I want to move this forward. So thank you. Um. Hi. I think what I think what you're missing is, and I and I agree with this. And I do watch the city council meetings, and I do agree this. This isn't just a one-time thing. This is the norm. Remember when we had that case we were dealing with uh, a four sander, and it was like, well, the next day they're doing it, or the AARP. I mean, the uh, 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 annual plan. It's like we're doing it the next day. This is the makeup of what the director does here, and by extension, the board. We wait to what's that saying? Uh, it absolutely positively have to do, uh, be done the next day. And that's not good practice we're talking about. There's no way that I will want to go against the board. And thank you for Commissioner Jones for explaining that. I give him more creed because he is a part of the board members. But what I'm saying is, and I think it's a larger issue I think people are missing, we don't hear from them. And you can say, well, well, well they can come. Why don't they come and speak? Why don't workers come and speak? Do, do they know about these meetings? I'm sure. Do they feel comfortable sharing what's going on? That's my issue here. I would have loved to, if we had, if we did what the bylaws said and had our meetings and stuff, we could talk to people about this and get a better understanding. I don't want to rubber stamp because that's the first thing they say in our commissioner's handbook. Don't rubber stamp it. I'm not, and that's a big defense that people always use to say, ah, ah, we're doing operations. That, that, that's what the ED does. Let's not do that. That's not what we're asking about. We, what's going on? We want to support our workers. We want to support our workers. I especially, I just don't like the fact that it's the day of, and this is, if this is just a one and done thing, it wouldn't be any issue. I would say, okay, fine. This was a thing we had to do, but this is the norm. Can I and ask a clarifying question now? Can I ask a clarifying question of who? Uh, to Director Leeper? When did we actually get the final word from our negotiating committee and the union negotiating committee? When did that, when did we get that word? I know you're muted, but you're, you're trying to say that it's Thursday, I think. Thursday, June 22nd at 4 17 p.m. Okay. So if we got it this on to you guys on Thursday as well. So, so did you know we got, we got the, the let me let me just clarify. So point of we order. got the word point we, of order. Okay. You're out I'm of order. Sorry. We have a point chair. Of order. Point of order, yes. Point of order. I think the chair who's, has, who's, the, who has, has to, to recognize the speakers. It's getting right. out of here. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. And, and I'm going to nip this now in the bud. Point of order, Commissioner Tarbutton. Will you wait for the chair? I am waiting. You're talking. I'm waiting to hear her. Okay. I would like to move forward with this, with the knowledge that we received the word from the union and from our negotiating committee that they had achieved an agreement on Thursday. We sent that information on Thursday to the whole board. They are hoping we will come back and not have to wait until after our July meeting. They want us to come back, which has been typical and standard as, as Commissioner Jones has pointed out. Just because it's the way it's always been done doesn't mean there's something wrong with it. <laughs> All right? So the fact is that we've been told that this was their agreement. They've been asking us to help them to ratify to move forward. I'm going to move the question forward if I don't hear any objection to that because I, we've, I think we've heard enough about the reasons why we're not happy with the timing. We're not happy with the timing, but we couldn't do better than getting it on Thursday and sending it out on Thursday. What we're gonna do now is just vote on the item that's on the table, which is to ratify this three-year contract. And I will ask the secretary to call the roll. Yes, this is a um, motion to authorize the executive director to sign and ratify a four-year contract with the union effective July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2027. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Uh, before I give my yes vote, I want to point out that what we're talking about is not giving enough information and enough time. It's not just a time issue. It's the lack of information. Point of order. Based on Understood. Order. Understood. Order. Please cast your vote. Understood. Please cast your vote. Marilyn, please adhere to point of order, Marilyn. It is a point of order. I'm it is sorry. a point of order. My vote but is I, yes. Uh, uh, the point. Uh, your vote is yes. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again. Next. Next. Com roll. Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Jones. 
Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. And I'd like to speak to some of the. Not now. Not now. Oh, okay. Okay. Here. Com yes. Commissioner like Richards. At another time, not now. Point of order. They're, they're not here. Point Commissioner of Richards. Order. Commissioner Richards. Yes, Commissioner Richards. I guess she's yes. abstaining. Okay, I am going to have to ask people to please not speak when they're not recognized. When mm -hmm. we're casting our vote, it's not the time to add other anything else. And so please just be mindful of that when we go around, because otherwise everybody's going to then explain their own vote while they're making at the time. The time to do that is before we vote. We understand. I think we not only have we have a recording. There are plenty of opportunities for us to go back and listen to what everybody has had to say. I appreciate your attention on this, and I'd like to move us to the next item, which is regarding the contract for the East Hampton Housing Authority. Point of information. It passed with how many votes? The motion passes. Yeah, right. Uh, I, 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 I know. Know. Unanimous. Passes. Unanimous. Thank you. The next item, please. Could you read that proposal, Director Leeper? Yes. Um, so uh, as well, as most of you may know, um, that I was notified um, uh, that I was contacted by East Hampton Housing Authority uh, chairperson. Um, and that on June 15th, I sent the board an email um, because of this contact um, with them, um, informing me that their executive director was resigning and that DHCD has recommended that they enter into a management agreement with us like we did similarly with the Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority. I discussed this with my team, Chair Carney, State Representative Sabadosa, and the Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority Chair who are all in agreement that we should help them. I've also con uh, been contacted by three city council members of East Hampton who were pleased with the fact that we of what we offer and expressed gratitude for our willingness to step in and help. Your board package included the DHCD paperwork that's necessary to enter into the contract, an article that was published on the front page of the uh, June 15th, 2023 Gazette, the presentation which I made to their board of commissioners at the East Hampton Housing Authority, recommendation from the housing, uh, the Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority chair in support, and a letter from State Representative Sabadosa in support of the agreement. At the East Hampton Housing Authority board meeting on June 13, 23, they unanimously voted to enter into a three-year management contract. Currently, East Hampton does not have an executive director and the only other administrative staff member is retiring tomorrow. That said, their office will not have any staff, which is why this decision is so critical and why we're excited to help. We expect to make a smooth transition for all without having any negative impact on our resident or residents or services. Furthermore, entering into this agreement will add funds to the bottom line of our budget some of these funds will go to staff that will be helping in East Hampton and the remainder will allow us to allocate funds to a position that solely processes applications, which has been recommended by DHCD for the last three years. The motion before you is after the executive director having reviewed the published performance management review and agreed upon procedures of the owners is for the board to authorize the chair to sign a management agreement and approve the executive director submit it to to submit it to DHCD for its approval of the management services agreement between the Northampton Housing Authority and the East Hampton Housing Authority for the term of three years for the annual agreement sum of $118,607.50 and further acknowledging that the executive director will receive $23,721.50 of this agreement sum as additional salary for a new annual salary of $195,445. Okay, so uh, the motion, um, I'm asking, I will put the motion on the table and ask for a second. A second. Moved and seconded for this for discussion. And I see Commissioner Richards, her hand raised. And then I see Commissioner Tarbutton. And I wish I could uh, speak, uh, recognize you, uh, Councillor Brad Riley, but unless there is a motion here to recognize folks from East Hampton, this discussion is limited to our 
Board of Commissioners. I make a motion, Board of Information. I make a motion that we recognize him. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded to recognize Councillor Riley. Um, Commissioner Richards, would you defer to Councillor Riley first? And his... Absolutely, thank you. Okay, and Councillor Riley, would you hold on one sec? Uh, Director Leeper has a comment. I'm sorry, I just, uh, so Joella uh, Tarbutton um, made the motion for us to allow um, uh, Mr. Riley speak, and who seconded that? That was I did. I Commissioner did. Richards. Okay. Yeah. Right, information, just for clarity's sake, could you please say Tarbutton Springfield? Remember you had that thing about my name? Oh, yes. Okay, so um, uh, Councillor Riley, uh, welcome from East Hampton, and um, you're recognized to speak on this matter. Um, uh, thank you, Chairperson Carney. Um, you know, I, I, I feel a little foolish uh, in how I came to this meeting earlier um, with uh, feelings of optimism and a willingness to collaborate. Um, I, if, if I'm being totally honest, I have deep, deep, deep reservations about the ability of this board to take care of the residents within my community. Um, I have never seen the type of uh, disregard and for decorum and a treatment of each other that makes me concerned that if residents from my community are asking for help in oversight from boards of directors, I, I have very little faith after this evening that this board can deliver that. So I, I recognize that I have very little authority to interrupt this process. I recognize that this is a process and an agreement that is done between the board of the East Hampton Housing Authority and the board of the Northampton Housing Authority. Um, I rescind my support for this process and I, I wish that I could be more supportive but <laughs> I don't I don't see a way forward where the the people who are in charge of this process can take care of residents in East Hampton I I regret to to say that and and I I hope maybe there is a glimmer of hope that from the position of the executive director who would be the staff person that would be doing this type of work that I can find some areas for collaboration and to insulate us politically from whatever is happening on this board. Um, I'm willing to do that. Um, beyond that, I don't know that I can support this process. I think that there's a lot of soul searching and uh, communication that needs to happen on this body. So I, I respectfully rescind my support. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your comments. Madam so, Chair, uh, there's another yeah. city councilor that has their hand raised. I don't know if you know that. Is that um, uh, Connie? Yes. Connie? Okay, so I'll ask if there is there a motion to recognize the councilor from East Hampton? Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded to recognize um, councilor Connie F. Yeah, it's uh, Connie Denham. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all uh, taking the time to let me speak. I just want to echo what Councillor Riley said. Um, I, you know, I also came here with real hope of being able to help our our residents, and I'm just I'm feeling a, a great deal of reservation. Um, just in a in a number of issues, I think that I've as a as a witness. Um, have heard raised today, and um, yeah, I'm I'm hoping that some other solution for the challenges that we are facing in East Hampton can be handled. Um, I, I say that with with all respect to your process, that's your process, uh, that these are your relationships. Um, but as a community that has no investment in our community. I'm just, I'm really struggling right now with, um, with um, having uh, faith <laughs> that will be supported. So I just, um, I just want to acknowledge that. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, <clears throat> Councillor. Um... And was there someone else from the 
Excuse me, um, Madam Chair. Um, Jack um, would like to know if he may be recognized. Um, I know that the city councilors were, but I just didn't know how you felt about it. And he has asked me to find out if that's okay. It's fine with me. We're asking if Jack Redmond can be recognized to speak. Motion to approve. A motion made to recognize Jack Redmond. Second. Moved and seconded. Yes, um, Jack. Thank you, everyone. I just want to mention that the members of the Northampton Housing Story Authority staff invested a lot of time in the Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority and our executive team and all of our staff that participate do really well administrating other properties, other housing authorities. And the East Hampton Housing Authority Board does not go away when the Northampton Housing Authority starts managing their properties. The Northampton Housing Authority Board is simply allowing the staff to take on additional work at another housing authority. The executive director and the staff that works under the executive director will be reporting to the East Hampton Housing Authority Board. Our staff has already had discussions and are actively planning on trying to improve the conditions of East Hampton Housing Authority. We did this exact thing two years ago, and there were reservations not only from the board that we have at Northampton, but also the Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority Board. And if you speak with them now, you'll see the great efforts and improvements that the residents have received over there. It's about the way that our team delegates and reorganizes and tries to enforce policies in a resident centralized form. And if any of you went to the East Hampton Housing Authority Board, you would have seen Director Leeper give that presentation. And so there's been a lot of comments tonight about staff not speaking. And so as a member of the executive team, I just thought it would be important that some of the board hears that we've really been working hard on this and we want to support the community in East Hampton. There are many of us who live in East Hampton, me being one of them. And so I just wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of that. Thank you again, commissioners, for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Jack. Um, <clears throat> I think that may make up the folks from our... Um... No, you have, um, you have uh, vice, vice Chair Joseph McCoy of the East Hampton Housing Authority with his hand raised. Could I ask if there's someone would recognize um, Joseph McCoy from the East Hampton Housing Authority? Motion to approve. Is there a second to recognize? Second. Moved and seconded to recognize Joseph McCoy. Hello. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, thank you again. I, uh, I'm on the Board of Commissioners in East Hampton, and uh, I, I was impressed with your presentation. Um, I think it truly takes some time being on a housing authority board to understand the uh, series of regulations that are imposed not by individual housing authorities, but by DHCD. And, and I think it's always a, a fine line to walk between uh, being able to enforce those uh, regulations as well as uh, you know finding time to be you know the ability to be compassionate and, and empathy with some of the the situations that are going on and something we constantly struggle with but i was really impressed with uh your presentation um i think um that as it was mentioned we we do not have anyone in the office uh as of uh, now executive director and as of Friday, the assistant executive director. So I think we are also in the need, um, desperate need to have help. And so I appreciate Northampton willingness to, to uh, step in that situation. Also, you know, I know uh, this, the, the initial plan of this, and I'm sure um, executive director Leeper will confirm this, but it's several times I brought up the fact that this is a contract that within a 60 days written um, notice to your board, as well as to the DHCD, uh, we could get out of this contract if we find our own executive director. And I think obviously this would be a discussion for our board, but I think that at this moment still our intent. Um, and I, you know, and I, this is something that I don't know if your board deals with, but you know it it has a two-edged sword with the the uh, city council being involved with the East Hampton Housing uh, 
direct uh, authority. They certainly represent clients, but they're not involved day to day. Uh, personally, you know, I would like to put a heads out to uh, Councillor Dunham, Dunham and that she did indeed meet and come to some of our meet and greets. But after all the collaboration that Councillor Riley has discussed, he has never met with the board or he has never met with the executive director, at least that I'm aware of. And I find that a little bit um, disingenuous when you talk about this collaboration when you have not met with the executive director. But I will now be silent, but I do, I do, I am certainly in support of this agreement and I hope your board votes in favor of it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. McCoy. Okay, now I'm going to ask for comments from the um, Northampton Housing Authority board members I see. Uh, Commissioner Richards, then Commissioner Cancel, then Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I just want to assure the folks from East Hampton, you are our neighbors. You are probably our closest neighbors and uh, we will serve you well. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry you have lost some faith after our board meeting, but do understand we appreciate adversity and uh, we take that into consideration. But I also have to remind folks on our board and on your board, you're still going to have your uh, uh, authority in, in touch. We're uh, uh, bargaining for a management to help with management until whatever time you make a decision about whatever suits yes. you best. I don't think you'll be sorry. And as a, a commissioner and also a city councilor who uh, I will admit it's sometimes hard for people to understand uh, the process, but we uh, serve, I will be voting for this because I think we can serve you well. It's a fabulous management team. And uh, I thank each and every one of you for the time that you've put into this. And um, I, I have total, total faith in you. I don't think you'll be sorry. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Commissioner Cancel, please. Thank you. Um, yes, so I learned about this uh, in the newspaper for the first time, for the very first time. Um, that is very problematic. That is very problematic. I thought, oh, maybe because I missed our last board meeting, I was away, I was out of the state, uh, I missed the conversation about it. Um, and I understand the situation and the predicament um, that East Hampton uh, Housing Authority um, is in at the moment. Um, and I got to tell you, I, I have, um, uh, for a short period of time, lived in East Hampton, and I've learned to love East Hampton. Um, I love our neighbors in East Hampton. My daughter lives in East Hampton. Um, and over the years, I have witnessed this beautiful city grow uh, into a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and um, uh, it is because of that that I'm concerned about the decision we're, we're, we're trying to make here. Um, I do not think we are equipped to help the East Hampton Housing Authority manage um, their properties. Um, I have over 33 years of lived experience with the housing authority, living as a housing tenant uh, and having family members and friends living in the housing authority uh, properties. And the amount of people that have mold in their basements that have um, uh, respiratory issues because of our poor management of these units that have mold. That's just one issue, one issue that I that I can bring up as an example. And I, I could not believe when I read that our executive director was tooting her own horns. No one should be tooting their own horn. I know as staff members and as board members, we do a, we we try hard to do the best we can, but in my opinion, we fail our residents miserably. In fact, there are times where I 
feel ashamed of being part of this organization because I came in hoping to make a difference. But time after time, my voice is shut down. I don't get enough information to make an informed decision at board meetings. Time after time, there's an excuse as to why as board members, we didn't receive information as soon as it was available. And when I try to make things, bring things up, I asked uh, the chairs to, uh, to uh, uh, introduce an item, a discussion, a conversation to our agenda. It is time after time refused. Instead, what they do is they take it personal. They think I'm attacking them. I'm not attacking you. I am questioning and I am critically questioning our process about how we do things and how we inform our residents and our board members. And again, I'll repeat myself, we do horrible with that. So we should not be proud of, 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 of having done a great job with maintaining our properties. Now, to the housing regional, uh, properties that we took over. I can't speak to that because honestly, I don't know how we've been doing with that, but I know how we've been doing with Florence Heights and Hampshire Heights and folks that I know that live at Fort Center and at Salvo House. I had my parents live in there. My grandmother lived there. I have friends that live there. We do not do a great job. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to try and fix that, to try and work with you all to do better on behalf of our residents. That's all I have to say in this regard. I am definitely voting no on this. Thank you, Commissioner Tansop. Uh, Commissioner Tarbutton. Yeah, I feel like crying. Five years ago, I knew about some of the issues that before I got on the board, I knew about some of the issues that were going on in East Hampton. Um, and it was interesting because what they were talking about, I was like, that sounds familiar. I just want to say, I think if you get into this contract, you're probably going to be in violation of the open meeting law according, because this went on. You heard her say a management team of Sabadosa, Representative Sabadosa, and the chair. Uh, the board is not one chair. I don't remember ever saying, chair, go, go talk on my behalf. Had we done this before or known about it, you wouldn't have to hear us with this dirty lawn. This is normal. And because it's on the video, it's nicer. You should have seen the way they talked to myself and Cassell. And when I'm talking about racism, professionally, I do, personally, and politically. So some of us know what we're talking about. And if the thing, it was overnight, like back alley things. It's just the way they did also with the executive com uh, committee, calling me up, telling me not to vote for one commissioner, the ED, who's not even on the board. I try to make an issue to bring it up that Marilyn Richardson, who was the chair, would say, uh, it's operations, yes. you can't do it. I, I didn't have a voice. This is depressing. When I saw that presentation she made to you guys, I said, God, they, doggone it, I want to live there. Why is that like? First of all, yes. my name is Marilyn Excuse me, Richards. excuse me. Uh, uh, please, please. I'm in the chair, please. I'm You're in of order. Point of order. Point of order, please. Yeah. Would you finish your remarks, please? Yeah, I would like to. Uh, I'm just saying, th they're friends and they know each other here. And the thing is, since I've been on this board three years, I have begged for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Northampton is a very progressive city. It doesn't represent the city. The law, you know, when I mentioned the lawyer, it's the stakeholders, the residents, the administration. And the city, it's embarrassing. I'm also a part of the reparations committee. And this isn't the only group that I'm with. I'm a part of the food pantry. I know how a group runs well, and this one doesn't. And you do this, you're gonna be facing, because you're already going through some political stuff now with the school. I have a friend who works there. And I go there once a week. You're gonna have this challenge because there is a guideline for a DHC guidelines, which you're not even adhering to. It says you have to put out notice. It says that you have to, you know, broaden the, the, the capacity. And I'm, I, I don't want you going bad after bad. The only analogy I can give you is that say, for example, you had an ED who was a doctor who was negligence and whatever, they were having death. Well, we have one that's having maim. So you want somebody to come over there and do that? That's not the way you do it. And if you do do this, you're gonna be facing yet another long 
protracted, possibly legal issue because public housing notice 2021 border. Border. excuse me. Point of order. Excuse me. There's I, 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 things that aren't on the agenda. Yeah, yeah. Let, um, let's stick to what the item is on the agenda. Well, the item says these are the DACD guidelines for local housing authority hiring of executive director. What you thought it was an intern. Point of not. order. Yeah. Show me yeah. Can't keep I, I, it quiet. I, I, okay, fine. That's what it is. I just think he's Hampton, you deserve better. We deserve better. Why are we all saying this? You won't have any issues here. You won't be able to vote. As a matter of fact, I'm going to let you know because I didn't hurt it. I don't get training. How many people here on the board have gotten training? Once after I complained about what she just did, that they got a training 12 months later. I don't Excuse me. Me. May, I, may I now call on? And no one ever has done it. And I have to pay my own way. Commissioner Tarbutton, may I please call now upon uh, Commissioner Jones? I didn't do that. Hey, Carol, talk to me. I know Kara did. She I has didn't do that. Oh, I don't know what happened, but would it be okay now if I turn to Commissioner Jones? Uh, Commissioner well, since you caught me off and wouldn't let me talk, go right ahead, please. No, that must have been an inadvertent. No, that was inadvertent. probably Kara that does it. She cuts me off when I talk. I'm That's just saying, East Hampton, oh, okay. you deserve better. Marilyn, you deserve oh, better. I'm just and I want you to think about this because I don't want you to be I'm getting in trouble with the Office of uh, uh, Open Meeting Law. We weren't notified. Nobody mm -hmm. makes board mm -hmm. decisions without contracting the board. And why is Sabadosa and the chair negotiating for the board and not even letting us know? Can you imagine reading this? Had no idea this was going on. And as a matter of fact, they keep talking about the uh, uh, what's happening in Huntington and Compton. Sabadosa had a, a, a house built. 3018 that she wrote in January to dissolve that and to cooperate with that. I didn't know anything about that. So this um, is what you're gonna get. May I please turn to Commissioner Jones for the next remarks? Um, in an attempt to get back to this, the motion, which is supposed to be what we're supposedly having a dialogue on. Yeah. Um, Kara, can you, elaborate a little bit about um, the labor relations component and under this plan how um, the labor would be executed in East Hampton. Is there anything that's going to change? Are you proposing solely, um, which the way I understand most of it, to come in as um, a management representative and do it that until such time as East Hampton can stand on its own two feet again. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, Commissioner um, Jones, we they already have um, they already have uh, maintenance staff. Uh, we would hire a property manager uh, to sit mo Monday through Friday, eight thirty to four thirty. Um, the positions that they have open administratively are um, three or four, uh, an RSC, an office person, um, and, and, and an, uh, uh, in, in lieu of an executive director, we would put a property manager sitting there, um, much like we did in Northampton, so that there is one-on-one -on -one customer service. We already um, have someone in mind that's a bilingual person for the RSC position, um, which I'm super about. Um, I would be um, giving the senior uh, service technicians a little bit of um, extra money uh, because we consult with them, which is also what I did with Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority uh, when we took their management. We consult with them because they have, time, they have certain licenses that other people don't, and it oftentimes will save money in the long run. Um, and so they get a, they would get a little bit of an increase, um, but our regular um, uh, maintenance guys wouldn't be doing the work orders or the turnovers or any of that stuff. Um, and, and so it wouldn't affect the union. Um, we've already uh, looked at who we could put as a property manager um, and an RSC, like I said, that's bilingual. Um, I think we have a good fit. We've already spoken to the podiatrist to be able to offer podiatry services to the residents. And we've already put the ball rolling uh, to be able to have the resident services coordinator get the people of East Hampton housing authorities, um, residents, groceries, as our residents have been getting groceries for the last three years during the pandemic. 
Did I answer your question, Commissioner Jones? Uh, pretty much, thank you. So the, the allocation for the property manager would come out of what? That would be, um, they actually already have a an ED budgeted. So rather than paying an ED, they'd be paying a property manager. Um, and so they already also have a position of a full-time administrative assistant, um, which, uh, which we would also fill. Um, and so essentially we're doing the day-to-day -day operations as we did with um, the Hampshire County. And as you know, Hampshire, we did such a good job with Hampshire County that Sabadosa wrote the bill to have Northampton um, absorb Hampshire County. Um, I don't suspect that would ever happen with East Hampton. Um, although I do think that we're going to provide such great customer service and provide them with um, an amazing amount of support for their residents. Um, to beautifully manicured and run and operated properties. I, I've toured them myself. Um, I even lived in some of them 38 years ago when I came to Massachusetts. Um, and uh, and so I, I think that um, they'll be pleased with us that they may not want to sign with an ED, uh, that they'll continue with just having us do the managing the day-to-day -day operations. And how many total tenants and how many total units are we talking about? So it's 180 uh, total uh, total units. Um, I'm uh, only only 20 of them are family, I believe, and so all the rest of them are single occupancy, single or double occupancy. So we're talking, uh, you know, and and you're you'd have um, essentially you have four maintenance guys. One of them is part time, and you'd have three in the office. That's more than enough to handle that size of a community. It's usually about one per 100 units. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm in support of this. Um, I would call it um, rescue attempt for East Hampton. I think East Hampton's um, a great city. I spend a lot of time there. Um, I think... Um, we can do this and and then it's if uh, such time as they are willing to reassume the um management and administration that's their call and i'm in support of it thank you thank you commissioner jones before i go back to commissioner cancel and commissioner tarbutton let me just ask is there anything commissioner brooks you have right now uh, yes I, I, have, I, have, I do have something to say um, I was born and raised in East Hampton for the first seven years of my life. I lived in a cold water flat for the first seven years of my life. Uh, then we moved to Northampton, where I uh, lived in numerous apartments throughout Northampton. Um, I've lived in public housing here for 23 years at McDonald's House. In New Hampshire, I lived in public housing here for 10 years. So I, I spent a few years myself in public housing. And I'm going to say that when I first read the newspaper account of Northampton housing um, taking part in East Hampton, I was against it. Okay. And then I said, well, maybe I should go around and ask the people who work in Northampton housing how they were going to handle working in East Hampton. And I get nothing but totally positive um, comments from all of those people. They said, this is what we like to do. And this is what we're going to do in East Hampton. The same thing we do up in Cummington and Huntington, um, which I was sort of against in the beginning too. So I'm, I'm going to vote yes for this too. Um, I really have faith in Kara uh, and her staff has more faith in Kara um, than I, I totally believed at the, at, at the beginning. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Then I, um, before moving on, the question I wanna give Commissioner Cancel and Commissioner Tarbutton one more opportunity before we move the question. Commissioner Cancel, please. Yeah, I have so many questions about how this uh, process came about and how it was um, communicated uh, to the board. 
But I have just one final um, comment, and it's, and it's for the folks in East Hampton who are here listening today. And I hope that um, um, uh, I can, I can uh, give a little, shed a little light um, on, on how things uh, operate here in the Northampton Housing Authority Board um, so that you could be cautioned about the, 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 the transition, which on paper and ideally, honestly, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing if I can say, I am very proud to be a board member of the Housing Authority and in Northampton. And I am I'm so excited to be able to help East Hampton, but I honestly don't think we can, we are in a position to be able to help East Hampton give the residents what they need, particularly because we're not giving our residents what they need. And it is troublesome. It is really troublesome uh, to me how things happen uh, behind doors here on this on this board. Uh, I just caution you um, with what you're about to engage in. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. And for the final word, please, from Commissioner Carbutton. Hi. Um East Hampton, there were, I, I, I do question some of this, how it came about DHCD, especially when DHC has a policy, how to go about doing that. So I'm not quite sure about that. And uh, I do think that I know I will be following the case with the uh, attorney general's office, how this came about and like, but I do want to ask your question. One of the things I've read that I want you to, to see where I would be happy to when the ED said something about only one grievance in the nine years I've been here. Let me tell you something, DHCD says, put uh, notices of grievances. Like, you know, when you go into a job, you see EEOC and sexual harassment, they're not up here. She says she's not required to. I called them, they said, and got no, uh, an email and I'll send it to you if you like, that they should be all around here so residents know about it. Residents don't know about the grievance procedure. You asked any of them, they don't know. In the 10 years, I've never known anybody who went through it. So if you wanna get a grievance, you have to go to Kara's office if she's there. What if the grievance is about her? So it's not a fair way of going about it. So, and as the uh, the chair, the lawyer said, 99.9% .9 of it works well. And that our, excuse me. Border, 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 yes, border, yes, border, border. Border. Now, come on, border. Commissioner Tarbutton, if someone raises a point of order, okay. I'm obliged to ask what that order is. Go ahead. Please, Commissioner Richards, yes, the point of order. We're clearly talking about not the question. Yeah, I would ask the Commissioner Tarbutton to please bring us to the question, meaning well, you're speaking to the board, not to East Hampton now. We're speaking to your colleagues. We're speaking to everybody who's listening, probably even America. I'm just saying that that's a falsity. When you heard a statement that says, we've only had one grievance or one is pending, that's not true. Majority of people don't know about the grievance. And it's hidden in her office. They have to come to her. That's not how you should do it. It should be everywhere. That's what DHCD says. So that's an untruth. And so the part about... All the good stuff that they do here, we're telling you that. We're residents here and we're telling you, talk to the residents. Come ask them. Oh, I tried to get a, a survey here. Oh, they had, you don't want people knowing because they have a false narrative point that they're presenting. Point of order. Yeah, I, I would ask the Commissioner Tarbutton to please address your questions to the rest of the board regarding your you're speaking to the merits or you're opposed. If you're speaking to your colleagues on the board and asking them to oppose, speak to them because we really have, you know. I would okay, think, okay, I'll do that now, I got it. Yeah. Kara fabricated that pre presentation that she gave to you. And if you don't believe me, here, do this. These meetings are on Northampton uh, House, uh, Open Media on YouTube. Look, you'll see what's going on. The uh, AAR, I mean, the annual plan, Zero tenants. Point of order. Wow. Point of order. Sorry to tell you the truth. I'm saying this out there so it can become Point public order. knowledge. What you were Point told, what you've been presented is a falsity. Thank you very much, Commissioner Tarbutton. So I think that You're was quite welcome. Word. I think that was the last word, unless Commissioner Richards, I think that you were just raising a point of order with your hand. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, but okay. I also wanted to say that um Commissioner Tarbutton needs to check her uh, information because the, uh, the grievance we are talking about is before the grievance committee. And I'm not going to ask to go back and forth. I'm not going to have any back and forth regarding sorry, Commissioner I'm Richard's sorry, comment. And, and I don't want to yeah. have a back and forth she was a chair. response. So I'm going to ask us. The information is incorrect. 
Yes, I, I understand that you want to say that some of it is incorrect, yes. and those yeah. things will have to be determined by some other body. Right now, we are going to move the question, which is to um, move forward with the three-year contract with East Hampton Housing Authority, and I'll ask the secretary to call the roll. Yes, this motion to authorize the management services agreement with the East Hampton Housing Authority for a term of three years. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. No. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Absolutely not. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, with two nays and four yeas. Okay, thank you. That motion carries. It actually brings us to the end of our new business. As I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting and in my remarks, over the next couple of months, I'm going to ask people to submit their additions, corrections, deletions, any ideas regarding the printed um, bylaws that we have as amended of April 2021. And as you know, by the bylaws, we're required every two years to update and review. So I'm going to consider this a two month kind of project where over the next, you know, if you can send things in to actually to uh, Director Leeper, who has agreed to consolidate these um, changes that people would like to see in the bylaws, and we put them together, we can then present them as a line by line um, review and update or change as necessary. There are certainly things that need to be brought up to date. So if people would on their own at least look at those items and submit those. Um, we could oh, also okay. send out, I could also send out a, you know, kind of a Google Doc that would allow people to put in their own, but I got to make sure that none of that is and any violation of open meeting law. We might not be able to do it in that context. I have a question from Commissioner Cancel and a question from Commissioner Tarbutton. I just want to point out that um, we still have an item under uh, new business. Uh, and um, I would like to also, after that, introduce a motion. Okay, what was the item? Did I'm sorry, did I overlook something? Yes, I was trying to bring a uh, resolution 2023. Uh, the place center. Yes, the place yes. center. Okay, yes. Okay, so for folks, if it will need further explanation. Uh, Director Lieber, could you read the reasoning we need the place center set in motion for? Yes. Moving forward. Uh, resolution 202505 authorizing, authorizing the approval to submit a place center for the federal FY24 budget. Whereas the Northampton Housing Authority wishes to submit a place setter for the federal FY24 budget, this is submitted to HUD to comply with the HUD guidelines on budget submission. This is then in place until the budget guidelines come out from DHCD for the state budgets, which will allow an official federal budget to be submitted. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority do hereby approve the rollover of the currently approved FY23 federal budget to FY24 until the new guidelines come out and the NHA has an approved FY24 budget from the state. Further, that the authority and the executive director in their name shall be authorized on and after the execution of the said contract to do and perform on behalf of the authority all acts and the things required of the authority to perform fully all obligations of the, the contract amendment and then be it resolved that the resolution take effect immediately. Thank you. Okay, so I'll ask other questions regarding this. Point of information. I haven't gotten this. I haven't had a chance to look over it. So I make a motion that we table this to next month or uh, so we I can get a chance to look through it and study it. If it's not a time you, sensitive, if it's not a time sensitive mo motion, we do need to have this in, right? As a place setter. If it's not yeah. correct. If it's not a time sensitive. I'm sorry, what'd you say? If it's not a time sensitive? Yeah, saying? this is this is time sensitive. We need to put in yeah. a place setter. And again, it's not something that's cast in stone. It allows us to place to basically hold until we get to the point of putting in the actual budgeted budget items, which then come before the board for approval to be put in. Um, so th th that's basically the uh, and then I think Commissioner Cancel has a question. Yes. Yeah, I just want to again point out the pattern. 
everything is last minute. Everything is last minute. Just about everything is last minute with this board. So what are we here for that's board members? This okay, is I, I think that that was a question for me. Hold on one second. It's true that our items have, so we know that we have to have the place setter in place by this time, by the end of June, right? Or begin before our next, before our next meeting in July. We could have had it put on the agenda in May, but that would have been a long time before. So we could have, for example, what we could do, we have options. If you really feel like you need to have an additional meeting of the board to vote on a place setter, we could set a special meeting just to vote on this place setter. What is the deadline that we have to have it in, uh, Director Leeper? The place setter. Sharon, um, don't we have to have this to them by the end of the month? Yes, and it's very typical for this place center to be every single month in June. We have certain themes that are just typical January. I think the point that, Com that Commissioner Cancel is saying is we should take up the automatic place setters in May. He's saying we should take up the automatic place setter in May. No, what so I'm saying is that uh, 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 another uh, commissioner uh, introduce the motion to to uh, put it for next month's agenda. And I'm saying that we didn't give her enough time to review that because she didn't she, get it. And so therefore, yes. Yeah, I understand that, that, but that there's moment. also dispute. So we know that there's also, Commissioner Tarbutton has been informed that all of her things are going to a Northampton MA, Northampton housing address. There's dispute as to why she has not been able to get that's those. More, yeah. And I'm yeah. not gonna go back to here now, but I do know that if we don't vote on this place setter tonight, on Monday, today is the 26th, we will have to have a meeting by Thursday. Thursday is the 29th, is that correct? Can, can I say something? Yes, this, please, I'm recognizing. This place yeah, setter is here. This place setter is truly just already just I know. move forward with the budget you currently have been using. I know it's already an approved, you approved budget. budget. You approved that budget already. So yeah, people are not objecting. People that. are not objecting to the merit. People are objecting to the timing. They don't like the fact that it's due on July first, and they didn't receive it at the May meeting. But we can't. They wanted, to, they wanted to have received it at the May meeting. Just but we can't have approvals too so far in advance. Right. It's well, see, that's the question. question. Uh, hold on one sec. The dispute here is there are members of the board who object to the fact that this is due on July 1st and they didn't get it at the May meeting because Which they would have, would have had to get it at the May meeting, right? They would have had to get it at the May meeting. Commissioner Cancel, you would have had to get it at the May meeting. Can I say something, please? No, I want to first direct oh, my okay. question to Commissioner Cancel. Are you saying that you needed to get this at the May meeting in order to be able to adequately vote tonight on whether or not no, to do it? No, no, I'm not saying that. And just to help us move along, I would just simply ask um, Director Leeper to use the second email for um, Commissioner Tarbaugh and until that situation mm -hmm. gets resolved. Because we're not allowed to. We've been told by DHCD yes. that we're not allowed to. But this is the second time. This, this is the second time I hear point from, of order, point of order. I'm not getting into this with Commissioner Cancel or Commissioner Tarbutton. They can take it up with DHCD. I have been informed that I should not use any email except Northamptonhousing.org. I've been informed by DHCD. That's the only thing I can use. That's, it doesn't work. Well, I don't, don't have order. that. No, that's not, that. no that's not true. That's not true that it doesn't work, Commissioner Cancel. Yeah. We're not getting into it now. Nobody else has order. housing authority. They don't want it. Nobody's requested asked it. For it. Nobody's Point asked for it except Commissioner Tarbutton asked for that address. Right. So help her figure out how to access We've it. We have offered to help. No, you haven't. Oh, oh no! I have an email yeah, we're that just gave back these and forth and forth tonight. Listen, order. I'm the chair, and we're not going back and forth tonight for the sake of the East Hampton House uh, City Council and everyone else. What we will do is we're going to vote tonight, and oh. Commissioner Car Tarbutton can take it up as a complaint. She can make a full oh, well. complaint. Oh, well, thank you. That's what we're going to. I did that for purposes. The reason that I said that the last item 
because it was not time sensitive, meaning attorney O'Connor's contract could be kicked down the road. We could kick that down the road. We can't kick this one down the road. So I'm going to hold firm that it has been delivered and it has been received. And even the, and if a person, even any one of us by Friday, if we know we don't have it, we should go into the commit, into the housing authority office and say to whoever is there, Jack or somebody else, give me a hard copy because I cannot access. I'm not saying that now, what I'm saying is that for tonight, I am not gonna support kicking this one down the road. We've already heard from Sharon that this is very automatic. We do this every year in June. And the argument is that we should have gotten it in May. We should have gotten it in May because we only have meetings in May and in June. And the only time that would have been the exact time would have been probably May 30th, you know, when we're all still on vacation. We have uh -huh. meetings once a month. And it's true that typically, if you were to look back, this placeholder, this placeholder has been voted on in June, I would bet you for probably the last 10, 15 years. However, if you want to make a sticking point of it, you could say that you need two more days and we can hold another meeting on Thursday. But Sharon Kimball needs this information to file as a, as a placekeeper for before July 1st. And we're not going to go past July 1st. If we don't take care of it tonight, we will all meet together on Thursday. Fine. So I'm going to ask, is, that, is, it your, is it your opinion that you need until Thursday to have to um, reconvene and vote on putting a place setter, keeping us a place setter for July? And I'm going to actually not support moving it forward because I know we have the bodies here tonight. So no, uh, I'm, I'm going to actually, in fact, I'm going to actually move the question. Thank you. I'm not, move the I'm question not, now. I'm not opposed to it. I exactly. think we should move. I think we should move and just get it over with. Seriously. Yeah. But we're going point, to move the question think, at this I think point. The point has already been made. So I think it's, it's public now. It's on the record. I think we should move forward and go ahead and approve it for sure. Uh, well, whatever you want to do it will happen when you're asked in the roll call for your vote, because that's what the, the executive director will do now. Please call the roll for having the place setter. Madam Chair, um, you presented the motion, but I need a second. I, I second. Thank you. Okay, for resolution 202305, federal FY24 play, uh, budget place setter, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you, Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. You're muted. You're muted, Commissioner Brooks. Muted. Still muted. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. I'll abstain. Abstain. And uh, Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank okay, you. so we have one more item. I think that Commissioner Castle wants to offer a motion under new business that can't be discussed, obviously, because it's new business. And I'll ask you to go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, I'd like to entertain a motion uh, to put an item on the agenda uh, to discuss your uh, personal remarks on this meeting today. Okay. Second, second, second. It's moved and seconded to have an item on the agenda for members of the board to address the personal remarks that I made today um, okay and i think that um, we we don't get to vote on this now we get to vote on whether or not to you know we have it, it's moved and seconded and we will take that up at the next meeting under new business and again just so people know it's not any action it's not there and there it's not any mo it's not any action of the board but it's um, it's an opportunity for the board to respond to the specific remarks that I made and I can, we can take care of those then under new business at the next meeting. Part um, of information. Can I get a copy so I can see that? I would rather it be, if you could put it, you don't have to give a snail mail to me, but inner office mail to the office here. Can I get that so I can look at it? Sure. Thank you. 
I'll actually include it in the board resources. Um, yes, uh, Commissioner Jones. Um, I just had a clarification of what we just did with the motion before about the place setting. If I could again use um, a union analogy is that a lot of times when we're bargaining in contract, um, you have a deadline say of July 1st, we don't make the deadline and we have an agreement to continue the, <clears throat> the old contract until the new one is settled upon. So the wages, hours and working conditions continue. And it's if such time as there are changes, then those changes would revert back to July 1 uh, going forward with the new contract. And that was really all that the place setter um, motion tonight was trying to achieve. And I'll leave it there. And I should have said that earlier and I'm sorry. Thank you for the clarification. And Commissioner uh, Richards? Oh, uh, no, I don't have any remarks. Oh, okay. So I think that that takes care of it. We have a motion on the table, among other things that you'll receive for the July motion, for the July meeting. Again, please look for the executive director review form that you'll all be asked to please fill out and send back so that then as chair, I can make a synopsis and um, deliver that report to the executive director. And the- Part of uh, information. Yeah. Uh, uh, when you're done. Oh, um, uh, okay. So, and then the other thing was that um, asking people to please again, review the bylaws as you see them as amended in April, 2021 and submit any and all ideas for updating and um, uh, making consistent with other areas of law where there may be some inconsistencies presently. So we want to do our best to make sure these are updated and in good form. That's one of our responsibilities as a board. I guess that's it. Can I speak to that? I'm sorry. The yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to say I was on a governor's committee and I love the bylaws and we had it with a Google Doc and we went over. This is one of the reasons bylaws also say have a committee. I wish we could have done that because it is so it doesn't have to be this laborious thing. It's getting together. And maybe if we had what the bylaw says, these committees, we wouldn't be doing everything at the last minute. Yes, uh, I understand. And at this point, point it feels most, yes, yes, the point of order. I think there's a question on the floor, whether to uh, put on the agenda. We didn't vote on that. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so we can, add, well, people, uh, it's actually not something that needs to be voted on at oh, this okay. point. I'm yeah. gonna go ahead and allow it as chair. Yeah as something that's within the purview of the board yep. but having to, because I made the point of delivering those remarks tonight. So I'll make sure those are distributed to everybody and people who really feel they like want to respond to my remarks regarding my, then we'll have the opportunity to, to do so at the set aside time at the July meeting. Yes. Uh, I think I may have a new meeting, a new, uh, 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 new business thing. Um, someone has asked me based on the videos if they could interview me. And, you know, just like I said to you guys, I wouldn't do anything without the board approval. But um, I said I would ask the board um, as a radio, I think. And uh, I said I couldn't say anything. It's the board. But, you know, I don't have a team who's doing that. But and it has been done already. But a lot of stuff that's been going on. So I'd like to bring this up. Who can talk and who can be uh, presenting? Their perspective, whether it be a tenant or the board, definitely not the board, uh, negotiating, doing business. I would never do business on it, but I have been asked. Are, you, like asking, are you asking for a clarification? No, I'd well. like for that to be put on the board because clarification for me, I thought I understood it, is that none of us talk to anybody without the board deciding. But, you know, I guess if you have your management team, you can do that. And I'm confused why I'm chair. That that's not no one on this board talks to anybody and represent as a representative well, of the board. Well, didn't you talk but, to the people in East Hampton? Wasn't that a management team? I didn't no, talk to anybody. I never talked yeah. to anybody. Yeah. Oh, I she said you were from management team. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's what I said. No, I never talked to anybody in East Hampton ever. Oh, you didn't go and write that up and part of the management team? Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. Okay. So I I, I think that then that's withdrawn as not as not a really a question. But we all know that no, none one of us, well, none, one, like of us well, none one of us speaks for the board. Thank you. 
Yep, none, none one of us speaks for the board, no. So, okay, then I think that's understood and we have uh, an agenda item for next meeting and there will be other agenda items that will come up over the course of the month. And I think that I hope that people will be patient for some of those things. Do we, can we expect that there's anything that will be time sensitive by the end of July? Like, do we expect that there'll be something that'll come to the July 21st meeting and there are gonna be objections for it being time sensitive that maybe we should hear about now or we should hear about in the next week or two? Jack, can you pull up the um, the annual schedule of things that go on each month and look and see what's on for July for me really quick because you're faster at that. And then um, I'd like to ask um, uh, Madam Chair, if I may, um, if Commissioner Charbutton could stay on, I'd like to um, help her uh, since we're already in Zoom, I'd like to help her be able to access her email. I let you go ahead. Was that something you had agreed to, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton, to the help after the meeting for getting access to your email? She, you're you're okay. muted, Commissioner Tarbutton. We can't hear you. I actually I run my cup runneth over. I have to. Uh, okay, I have well, to leave we, the meeting. What, but what, I would what, like to instead. Excuse me. I would like instead to speak to someone in the ET department. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I, IT is not necessary to be able to help you log into your email. And so I am happy to do that either today after the meeting or anytime tomorrow or anytime, any day of this week. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel comfortable meeting with you uh, personally, but yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get back with you. Um, we, we can, we can do it. We can do if it. Jack, if Jack is available, I prefer if Jack we, can do we it. Can, Jack already sent you instructions on how to do it. it. Where, yeah, didn't work. Effective, I can bring so. it over there to you. I have a, uh, I have a little uh, thing here. I can take it, to, bring it to him, and we can work it out. But it hasn't been working. So, so if you um, want to bring that to me, you let me know, and I will get it going for you. Absolutely. Uh, no yeah. Commissioner Tarbutton, will you work with Executive Director Leeper to find a time with a staff that you will be amenable to working with? Sure, I, I would, I would. Yeah, I would I'd be happy with this. I'm just not comfortable meeting with Kara. Um, yeah, Jack, Jack and I can Jack and I can do a Zoom any day this week. Jack can't do it. I think Commissioner Tarbutton doesn't director. want you involved. I think I don't feel comfortable. I have relations with you, and you said one thing and hasn't been true, and I don't want that right now. I'm trying to zen. I mean, Commissioner, uh, uh, Chair, Madam Chair. Jack has already attempted to help her get it going and sent her instructions and that didn't work. Nope, that's so, why we can do it on a Zoom. It'd be great. So that's why I'm trying to resolve the issue. Um, Not I'll, tonight I'll, though. I understand and what like. I'm hearing, what I'm hearing from Commissioner Tarbutton is she's amenable to doing any work to find her email, to get a working email address as long as it doesn't involve you. Yes. Along. Okay, well. that's what I'm hearing. Okay, so and that's I think that uh, Director Leeper, we can leave that if that's okay with with Commissioner Leeper, who's actually Jack's, you know, supervisor. Would I know it's kind of a big ask, but would you be amenable to having um, if he's uh, able and willing, uh, Jack Redman work with Commissioner Tarbutton so that her email will work by the end of the week. You're muted, Commissioner Tarbutton. Oh, did you say me? Yes, of course. Okay, and and so we're all we're all set. We can do that. We can work that out for something between the three of you by the end of the week. Okay, and uh, I, yeah, I know it's it's hard, but if we can get past that, at least then Commissioner Tarbutton will be getting all of her emails. Well, we know that we have a couple of items. We know that we have the continued item for next meeting, which is the vote on the contract for the um, for Tom O'Connor's uh, contract. And um, everything stays as is until that then gets voted on. That wasn't something that was absolutely time sensitive, but the place said it was. So I'm glad we were able to get through and get past that. And then in the meantime, we were gonna see if there were any items that were gonna come up unexpectedly at the end of July for which there's going to be objection because we didn't hear about it early enough in advance. Jack, is there anything on for July or August on the, on the calendar? 
No, so July, there is nothing. Uh, we do do the Section 8 CMAP preparation in July, and we ask the board to vote on it in August. And so I work with Angel and you, Kara, on that. And so if we finish it in July, I guess we could send it out before the August meeting. So it far. sounds like there are board members who would like to have that information, especially anything they know they're going to be voting on later in the month. They want to have it as soon as possible. If they know it's going to be an item for them, they want to get it three weeks in advance. So however long, as soon as you find out. Can I say something? Yep. Yeah. My end of year, end of quarter is due August. So, we, so that will that will come up in July. No, it'll it'll be the August vote, but I would not be able to get even that month early. Gary and I keep it open as long as we can to do accruals. This I understand. Happened. I understand. But is there a way we can satisfy the complaints that we heard tonight about needing to have this information sooner? And I know, Sharon, you're on a deadline and you try to keep it open and you try to keep it rolling. But would it be possible? And maybe I'll ask if Commissioner Kinsell, would you feel like it would be enough time if you got it a week in advance? Are we still at open meeting? Yeah, that's. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, OK, so I'm, I'm just trying to get a sense of because I know I'm trying to look at what's going to be next month's agenda. And I know that a running complaint has been not about hearing things, hearing about things soon enough. So I'm trying to get the I get it, get it to folks so that if there's some, I don't want to hear this again next month where people are saying, why am I just hearing about this now on July 21st? Mm -hmm. You're telling me you need it by August 1st. Why am I only hearing about it July 21st? Because that means I have to decide today and I want to hear about it two weeks or three weeks or five weeks or however long it is that my thing is that I'd like to hear about it in advance. So I'm trying to kind of give a little bit of the impetus. I know it's not always going to be possible. I know. And then maybe if if we know, for example, it's something that comes up that was really impossible to try to get to people in advance, that they might be able to better understand why, because it's, as you just mentioned, Sharon, it's a fluid process. It's something that you're keeping open until the day of the meeting. And then you're giving, a, but maybe there's a way you can actually look at the results a week before, send those, and then still keep, as you said, you're, you're open. But you could say, oh, like a snapshot. This is a snapshot of what we had two weeks ago, if that helps you with this being the running tally that we have today. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. But on financials, that would be very difficult. I know it's very difficult. I know it's really difficult. But Commissioner Cancel, there were commissioners who were saying they really want that. They really want that as soon as possible. I, I mean, and to, Madam Chair, to, to do that, I sent out all the information um, on June 15th about the East Hampton and, and all that. June 15th, which yep. was weeks ago. Yeah, um, so that people would have time to review it and think about it and ask questions of me if they right. have me. Um, I sent out the uh, stuff on the on the union um, seven. The day, hours. Yeah, the day the the day uh, that they agreed. I yeah, never so got it. I never got it. Could you hear what I'm saying? I didn't get it. Yeah, we I, all know I, why. I, we all know why. That's what we're saying. Yeah. And, you know, I'm with other boards, too. They get the stuff done, too, especially financial. So it takes me a little bit to go through it. So thank you. I think we should end this meeting. Um, yeah, we're we're going to end it, but I just want people to know. I just want people to know that I'm asking and that I'm asking the people who are involved in doing this. I'm asking Sharon. I'm asking the executive director. I'm asking the people who are responsible for pulling together these numbers and things for us to, as Commissioner Cancel has said, do better. We're asking you to do better. Get us the information sooner. And I know it's a big ask and it may even be impossible. Of, At least you know the that the ask is out there. Part of it. So I think with that ask and you know the huge challenge that it presents, <laughs> I'm gonna ask if maybe we could have a final motion. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Moved and seconded to adjourn. Thank you, everybody, for a great meeting. I really appreciate it. We'll see you on July 21st. Look out in your email. 17th. Executive Director Report and thanks. Yes? I believe it's the 17th. <gasps> oh, you confirm that? Okay, sorry about that. I don't have my calendar in front of me. For the third, third Monday in July.